speakers and uh, honorable eminent uh, participants are from different countries though i love speaking in hindi but today i have decided to go in english harishchandra post graduate college varanasi is giving us today opportunity to meet together and harishchandra bhartan harishchandra is known as father of the modern hindi hindi in present form what is called as thadi hindi i remember many persons including amir khushro or bhartan harishchandra ji or many other uh, authors like uh, mahavi prasad dwivedi from unnao they all had put different types of efforts at different time of course to build this language and it is said that if you love your language you have more chance to become a person with original original thought with sense of independence so your college name itself is very very loving very very attractive very very profound harishchandra pg college varanasi i congratulate each one of you for arranging this webinar honorable vice chancellor professor rajkumar sahab who just addressed us now with punjab university honorable vice chancellor of mahatma gandhi kashi vidyapeeth professor t n singh sahab our eminent speakers in this webinar mr arturo koral mr chipa young dr mabonu chikvelo professor pavnesh kumar ji who is now working with mahatma gandhi central university at champaran my very good well wisher and friend professor amit kumar dwivedi sahab and i think that he is going to give a very penetrating lecture today because he works continuously in the field of entrepreneurship principal of the college dr om prakash singh ji and head of department and my special thanks to head of department professor anil pratap singh ji only because of him today i am with you because we are connected for last three decades we are very good friends we are like family members for last three decades so thank you dr anil pratap singh ji that you gave me opportunity to be with you all and have fruitful interaction and it is a feast of learning we all will learn from each other entire faculty of harishchand college pg college of varanasi congratulations to you all let me start with one word that you used in your pamphlet for this webinar that covid 19 has come as black swan and just now we heard in saraswati vandana that saraswati ji is dhavala prakash dhavala prakash means completely vibrant with white bright color like her vehicle that is swan is white swan sometimes when she is not on her vehicle but still is restful on lotus it is white lotus her apparel sari mostly we find is also white because white it is indication of purity whereas black in certain culture is is uh, indicator of inauspicious thing but in vedantic culture also when you have used the word black swan black color has been highly respectful color even in indian culture and many other cultures you see out of 10 mahavidya mahakali is black kali black night is black the child lying inside the womb of mother he or she the child fetus is in black mold a seed when sown beneath the earth the seed is struggling with black because beneath the earth the seed is only find blackish environment only dark 
each one of us has spent nine months in the womb of mother in that black world. So I'm very thankful that I, I don't know, but knowingly and knowingly you, you use the term black swan and it attracted my attention. Black means opportunity of fertility. Seed needs darkness. Fetus needs darkness. And sometimes when we meditate, we should not meditate in most bright light. There should be dim light or preferably darkness. <laughs> So black word, I don't know, you use with lots of, let us say, understanding. And black swan should not indicate at all as inauspicious. Black should indicate as an opportunity for next level of fertilization. This is the approach. This is my understanding. And I think the time has come that we should be able to interpret opportunity. We should be able to uh, uh, take certain indications of opportunities in difficult time, rather sitting with passive mood and saying that it is difficult time, it is bad time. It is different time, no doubt, but it is not bad time. So there is one feedback I wanted to give on the word you used on your, on your pamphlet. It just came by chance and I am spontaneously speaking to you. Second one, you see, before I come to topic directly for a few minutes and many things have been very nicely elaborated by our to honorable vice chancellors. But you see, some lessons we are learning from Corona. And I would say, mildly, of course, not with louder voice, thanks, Corona. You taught me these few things. I would like to share with you. Number one, during this phase of Corona, we are saying, hey, my loving one, please maintain a distance with me. Stand a bit apart from me. I like you, I love you, I adore you. You are my father, you are my mother, you are my brother, you are my wife, you are my friend, you are my colleague, but please stand at a distance. Now, what does it mean? There is a lesson coming, very deep lesson. We have been living in a very blind world. When Corona started, we were actually living with full of unawareness. Never we were stopping and thinking in pensive mood that where we are going. We should run as fast as possible, but sometimes we should stop and should ask in which direction I am running. And that question we were seizing. We were not asking ourselves where we are going. The corona is saying, please maintain a distance. We have become too much attached with body level pleasure. In Sanskrit, there is a word called deha dhyas. Deh mehi fansjana. Searching happiness or sukha bhav at the level of body. But now Corona has taught us or reminded us again that, hey, actually the happiness is at mental level, psychological level, spiritual level. And the joy that is at body level is ephemeral. It is short lived. So Corona has taught one lesson to get away from Deha Dhyas. First lesson I learned from Corona. Second lesson and last lesson, then I'll come to the topic. Very important lesson Corona has taught us. Now, before Corona, we used to discuss through online mode very rarely. And of course, our friends who are in distance education mode, my many friends are working in um, distance education universities, they, their modus operandi is online because they have to reach to those students who are not able to reach to conventional system of studies. But our experience with online discussion was ill frequent, less frequent before Corona. But after Corona, lots of webinars, online teaching. Just yesterday, we concluded 21 days of training in MDI, 21 days of training for engineering core services of defense, the defense officers of engineering core. And yesterday, we completed 21 days training program. So training. During Corona, at our institute, we introduced two new batches of post-graduation level. One year each, of course, they are executive programs, but one year duration, long duration, executive teaching program. Some of the activities and research are also not stopping. We have seen defense of thesis during this period. We have seen proposal of uh, topic of the thesis during this period. And we have seen discussion with research scholars and some uh, foreign scholars during this period. So works are not stopping. Frequently we are meeting on through online board. 
But one lesson I learned, which is a very fundamental lesson. You see, now when I'm speaking, you are all on mute. Means you are, you are not supposed to speak, otherwise technology will get disturbed. <laughs> so I'm allowed to speak. It is a great lesson. When somebody is speaking, others should not speak. Technology has taught us again indirectly that please be a good listener. So Corona is teaching us. Thanks to Corona, something it is teaching. And last thing I would again say, so many things, I can, I can go on, on and on, but this is not the topic. Last thing I would say, Corona has taught us very important dimension of life. And that is very relevant to the topic today that and, and all youth, because the topic is about opportunities for startup for youth, all youth especially, and I'm also a young person though my hair has gone, but anyway, I'm young by heart. Everyone should learn that Corona has again taught us to differentiate between what is necessary and what is unnecessary. When youth will start thinking about business opportunities, business model in post COVID-19 situation, in that case, their startup has to be based on a deep thinking that I, my startup should deal with those endeavors which are connected to necessities of life because many of unnecessary things in life which were otherwise knowingly or unknowingly flourishing, such unnecessary things will not get attention now. Corona will go. This form will go. Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Rajkumar Singh was saying, Corona will go. It might go in 23, but it will go. But some of the impacts it will leave permanently. Its imprint will be permanent. And accordingly, business opportunities also have to be explored. So my dear friends, means my own, own colleagues in academics or researchers or, 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 or uh, entrepreneurs or consultants or young minds who are listening, uh, how we will go further. Let me tell you, your startup has to be around necessities of life. You see, Steve Jobs was asked a question that um, how do you survey or try to know what customers need? Steve Jobs was a different kind of person. He had spent some time in Uttarakhand also, in front of Neem Karoli Baba. Steve Jobs said to the questioner, it is not the job of the customer to know what they want. It is my job to know. <laughs> it is an entrepreneur's job to know. It is a startup owner's job, job to know what my customers want. You see how Steve Jobs takes the responsibility on his own side. That's why we realize that persons with wisdom, who are persons with wisdom? Even a young mind who wants to start a startup needs to have wisdom. Professors need to have wisdom. Academic administrators, vice chancellors, directors, they need to have wisdom. Everyone needs to have wisdom. But who is a person of wisdom? There can be hundred ways of describing it. And one way of describing person with wisdom is that a wise person takes responsibilities on his or her own side can be called as person of wisdom or person with wisdom. Person with lesser wisdom or persons with devoid of persons devoid of wisdom, they shirk, they push the responsibilities towards other side. I think there's one difference between wise and unwise person. And we need to be more wise in this more challenging time. I'm not saying it is a bad time. It is different time. It is challenging time. We need to be more wise. Now, when we talk about startup for youth, especially post COVID-19, we should not forget one discussion which was always going on in institutions like ours or Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India or any uh, business college or commerce college where entrepreneurship is discussed, that even in those normal time, means pre-COVID-19, a startup was not, a, not an easy ball game. Because 75% of startup, even in normal time, when customers were taken as granted, 
Even in those times, startup was a difficult proposition. 70% thumb rule was that three fourths of startup would not go beyond three years of their first day of existence. That was the challenge. So there is a challenge for researchers here. I'm just indicating. First of all, researchers should think in this direction. What were the challenges with respect to starting a startup in normal time? Out of those challenges, there can be good research on this topic. Out of those challenges, which challenge has augmented its nature? Which challenge has become more and more now dense, concentrated, not diluted? And which opportunity gates are opening? Because when time changes, opportunities also open. So it can be a good research topic that in spite of uh, having a so-called normal time, we had difficulty for a startup, but which are, which are those difficulties, which are those sub-factors which have become uh, more difficult now or which require more attention now. And in this different time, which are certain new opportunities which we were not able to think earlier. Now this new situation has given certain ideas, which are those opportunities entering through the door. So, Second topic on which academicians and researchers should think, what are special challenges with a startup in this post-COVID situation, post-COVID-19 situation? What are different challenges? For example, augmented reality. It was upcoming concept in marketing management in last five to seven years. Augmented reality. Through this, Customers were being attracted to physical malls, and this model was in competition with online purchase. And augmented reality was showing for some time upper hand in the last two, three years I found. Augmented reality means basically techno-based artificial intelligence applied base to help customers to identify products well, and that helps enhancing the sales. And this was coming in competition with online sales but in the present time when physical proximity or physically going to mall etc people have been discouraged and till now government is saying do this and do that and we are following their dictations but a time is going to come after let us say one fortnight or one month government would say please think doing this please think not doing that and we have to apply our own money for example a vice chancellor or hod or director if they, we receive government directive that now you may open the college, they may say like mm -hmm. that, but then we have to separately decide that whether we should open the college or not. So another point I'd like to say regarding this startup for um, youth in this post COVID-19, I take a slope from Bhagavad Gita, ninth chapter, either 23rd or 22nd slope, which says, and the last portion of that is Yog Chemang Baham Meham. Yog Chemang. Yog means adding new things. And Chema means protecting old things. So, in the context of the startup, which kind of startup which were already on roll, we need to protect. And which type of startup we have to say goodbye because time has not been ripened for that kind of startup. So, which kind to be protected? Which kind of startup has to be said goodbye? This is under the category of shame, which will protect it. And yoga means through our own creativity and through our own understanding of customers' needs and demand, which are different kind of startup, those we need to start. So yoga and shame we have to keep in mind. Now regarding five points which I wanted to highlight, four have been highlighted. And even fifth will be highlighted by our uh, Honorable speaker, I want to save time also. I would not, not go longer, maybe two, three minutes more. You see, my five prong model is like this a startup in education sector, a startup in health sector, a startup in finance sector, a startup in agricultural sector, and a startup in what is called in management term B2B, business to business sector. And I think. When we are listening to Professor Rajkumar Singhvi 
and Professor T N Singh Sahab, both Honorable Vice Chancellors, they had amply highlighted on edutech, that is educational technology-based uh, interventions. Health, both of them emphasized. Agriculture, both of them emphasized. I would only like to say that in case of financial interventions, you see, in this present time, everybody's personal finance needs that is also getting uh, impacted and different kind of configurations are emerging. And for that, there is need to have startup in the field of financial sector where you can serve basically two purposes, helping people to manage their personal finance well, and secondly, helping individuals to have their basic needs met at their doorstep. This is one thing I would like to add. And last thing on, on this uh, five-point model I would like to add, B2B, business-to-business -business dealings. Because business-to-customer, for some time there is a dip, but business-to-business -business might increase. So a startup should think that how we can augment our business-to-business -business, uh, model. To end, in the end, I would like to say, I would like to quote here Valmiki Ramayan, which says, Laghu Moolam Mahodayam. Laghu Moolam means at the root there is little investment, but Mahodayam, Maha Uday, but profit is more. We have to see that during post COVID 19, how the customer needs have changed and which are those sectors where our though investment may be low, but its outcome will be very high. And if we keep profit in mind, profit may not come to us, but if we keep really the needs of people in mind, money will follow as byproduct, as a shadow follows the walking person. This is very important. And I would end saying that gain strength inside yourself, especially youth, because one couplet says, Ab hi karengi, roshni ka faisla, jis diye mein jaan hogi, there is no need for any kind of frustration, dejection, or um, keeping yourself low, going to self numbing. There is now opportunity, and we have to actually enjoy each day, each week as a thrilling episode. And I wish all the best for all of you. I'm highly thankful to Harishan College for ending this conference and given opportunity with you. Thank you. Best wishes for this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such an interesting and insightful session. Your way of discussing such technical matters in an easy to understand manner reflects upon the vast experience that you have in the field of management sciences. Sir, the author Taleb, who popularized the economic term black swan, has also emphasized that such events can be positive also. For example, the rise of internet is also described as a black swan event. Our culture truly appreciates the black colors and in every darkness sees an opportunity that is awaiting. Thank you, sir, for emphasizing the above. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My second technical session starts. Our first eminent speaker from abroad today is Arthur Koral from Peru. Dr. Asokji, please introduce our eminent speaker. Dr. Asokji. Okay, sir. Our first eminent speaker, Mr. Arthur Koral. Country Manager Hero Startup from Peru, Latin America. Expo, exponential Studies, Artificial Intelligence, ML and Product Market, Fit at Stanford University, EEUU, graduate from the EDI. He studied entrepreneurship to strength, energy, emerging economics, Hero Startup, CEO, recognized as a top 100 entrepreneurs in Peru by Ultra Ventures, Judge Mentor of Founder Institute, 
द एस फैक्टर स्टार्टअप थीली कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियर हिज स्टार्टअप वॉज रिकॉग्नाइज एज वन ऑफ द नाइन मोस्ट प्रोमाइजिंग स्टार्टअप इन साउथ अमेरिका बाय बिजनेस इनसाइडर एंड वॉज पार्ट ऑफ द स्टार्टअप Chile, Varia, Peru invited to develop IT projects in software innovation. To Silicon Valley, Brazil invited to Berkeley University to make a presentation on innovation and entrepreneurship for the development of emerging countries. Speakers at TEDx, sir, you are most welcome. Please. present or your views in front of us hello uh, good good morning there <clears throat> good morning thank you very much dr ashok said thank you uh, i am very glad uh, dr ashok uh, because we are from peru and we are invited to this uh, brilliant uh, uh congress this brilliant uh, uh possibility to talk with you uh, in in another continent here in peru is 2 am in the morning but we are happy to share our knowledge what we are doing and to share what's happening in this part of the continent okay i will i will show my my presentation let me share okay i i think i think you can see it it's okay right perfect perfect thank you so i'm going to talk about post covid 19 startups opportunities in latin american and caribbean and a short and a bit in india in this international conference as you said here is kind of my brief but i'm going directly to the to the point i am from peru as as, as you told what's going on with this uh, covid-19 global problem what's happening in in these days in in the world as you as you can see here you can see what's happening for example in real time this is a dashboard in real time about united states what's happening there there are 2 million 2 million people confirmed cases by by covid-19 and there are more than 100,000 deaths there but let's show this part this yellow part here Uh, it is not it is not uh under control yet because the cases daily cases daily cases are are not controlled not under control yet okay what's happening in india also india india is is as you can see this yellow graphic here daily cases are raising so we have to as the previous professor says you have to keep your distance because we we need to we need to be safe and safe our brothers our colleagues our friends also in my country uh, i want to show you what is going on in my country in real time uh, nowadays we have more than 200000 uh people which is with covid-19 and also we cannot control yet the covid-19 so it is rising also okay well that that is happening in 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 our world uh covid-19 is a real impact um and it affect the global market these are top 5 affected sectors for example work spaces we can we can go to our offices education primary school secondary school institutes universities all of them are closed so we we can go to 
to study like normally. Entertainment, entertainment like stadiums, like uh, theaters, like cinemas, those places from one day to the next day, we can, we can go there. So they are closed. Many jobs, many jobs are stopped in those places. Hospitality, we are talking about restaurants. Restaurants are closed. Also hotels. Hotels are, are, not, are not working anymore in, in, in our countries. So the tourism, the tourism, I, I, I would love to be in India. I would love to be in India in this conference. However, I can travel because our borders are closed. The airlines are stopped. Even if I want to travel inside my country, I can do that. So it is very difficult moments. However, there, there is a light also. But what is happening in India? <clears throat> in India also, the most affected are airlines, hotels, auto and advances industries, construction, real estates, and so on. Well, let's see, let's see a, a view in what's happening in Latin American opportunities. We have been talking about how the COVID-19 is affecting our world, but also we have opportunities in this, during this time. And I want to say to all uh, people who are connected that crisis time is a good moment to launch your business. Crisis time is a good time to launch your startup. Because as you can see in this graphic, General Electric, General Motors, IBM, Disney, HP, between others, they were launched in crisis times. Also, if you remember in the 2000 year, the dot-com bubble, the dot-com bubble was a crisis time, was a bad moment for entrepreneurs. However, in that moment appears Google, Salesforce, Facebook. They appear in that moment in the crisis time. So as entrepreneurs, when a crisis become, you are in the good moment to start a new business because there are problems. If you can, if you see problems as a startup, as a startup founder, you can see big opportunities. So let me show what's happening and how was the impact in Latin America. In Latin America, let me, let me focus in this, in this area, education, commerce, tourism and transport, manufacturing, natural resources are the most affected sectors. So, but after all those sectors are affected, also despite of this pandemic time, despite of this pandemic time, fundings are happening in Latin America. This is a magazine which is called TechCrunch, okay, TechCrunch, and TechCrunch says, what's happening in Latin America in this time. Look, you can see here we are going, I'm going to talk about Alpha Credit. Alpha Credit here is a FinTech, a Mexican startup from Mexico. And they, like a, one month ago, they raised 100 million US dollars. It means that in, in pandemic time, in COVID-19 time, they raised $100 million from SoftBank. SoftBank is a big player in Latin America. You have to know as entrepreneurs, what are the VCs, venture capital players in, 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 the, in the areas, okay? So SoftBank is investing $100 million US dollars in this FinTech, in the financial sector. The another one I want to talk is Fruvana. Fruvana is a Colombian startup. 
Okay, it is a Colombian startup which has raised 25 US, 25 million US dollars in a Series A. Okay, also another VC related is Tiger Global. So as entrepreneurs, as I tell you before, is you have to learn which players, which angel investor, which venture capitals are related to, to, to go to there and pitch your startup, okay? Thruvana also was accelerated by Y Combinator. Y Combinator is one of the best accelerators in the world. So you have to see what is Y Combinator and how is the selection process. Brazil's Uber for trucks, Cargo X, Cargo X raised 80 million US dollars. It is happening in Brazil. So raising money in pandemic time, it's, it is possible. Let me talk about Nubank. Nubank is from Brazil. Nubank is valued in $10 billion. In less than seven years, this digital bank in FinTech area, Nubank, is valued in $10 billion. And the final one I want to talk is Corner Shop. Corner Shop is a Chilean startup with operations in Chile, in Mexico, in Peru, in Canada. And Uber announced that Uber is going to buy this, this startup. The amount is related to more than 400 million US dollars. So it is going to happen in, in Chile and Uber is going to buy this, this startup. So I want to say that pandemic time is not a time to become free. It's not a time to be a stop. It's time to see a little bit more and open our eyes and trying to find the necessity of customers in this situation and for, and for the future. Okay, uh, let me talk a little bit about, about my country. What's happening in funding in Peru in, pande in pandemic time? In this time, also in my country, they are startups that they are raising money. For example, let me talk about Creana. Crehana is a startup which is related to education sector, but all their courses are in digital, in digital, uh, in digital way. So you, you can you can uh, take lessons from design design uh, experts. So they receive five million dollars. And Maria Pia Morante, Maria Pia Morante, which is a general manager of Acumen, Acumen is a venture capital. She said a few weeks ago, we helped to Creana in a few, in a new round because they reacted well despite of the situation of COVID-19. It was the first week, the first week in June. So it is happening as I, I, I want to tell you that. In every part of the world, there are investors, there are angel investors, there are venture capital that they are giving money to, to entrepreneurs. So in Latin America, there are new seven new uh, players. There is Acumen, Crealo, Belcourt, Nilo Ventures, Dila Capital. They are new venture capital, new investors that they are giving money to new startups uh, that they are launching their, their startups in this time. So I want to talk a little bit also about the, the businesses in my country, in Peru, how they are facing this COVID, COVID problem. For example, I want to show you this is in the in the left side the picture in the left side this is a caf it is a cafeteria 
it is a well-known cafeteria which is called San Antonio. And as you see, there are people there, but nowadays it is not allowed. It is not possible to be in a cafeteria in this way. So they change their business model, they change, and nowadays they are they are uh, a grocery store. They are selling groceries. Okay, so they change it the way that they been doing they've been doing business. The next one I want to show you is join us. Join us is uh, like a you you can buy a ticket for going to theater, for cinema, for concerts, to stadium. You can buy tickets in this in this startup which is called Join Us. But nowadays you can go to theater, you can go to cinema, you can go to stadiums. So Join Us had to redesign his business model, and nowadays they are doing live concerts okay nowadays they are join us live okay as you can see they are changing the way that they are doing business also i want to show you uh 14 incas liquor it is a liquor made it is a vodka made from from potato from peru you know that vodka is made from potato so as you know no, nobody is uh, allowed to go to the bars, to, to the disco clubs, or to restaurants. So you, you can't drink in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an open areas. So it was very affected uh, a company. So they, they change it. And nowadays they prepare alcohol, antiseptic alcohol. So nowadays they are like a selling this kind of this kind of alcohol antiseptic, not anymore vodka. And also the restaurants, the restaurants are changing the layout. Nowadays they have to put this kind of new layout to not, to not spread the COVID-19. What about the, the delivery? Before in the left side, as you can see, you can see people in their bikes doing delivery stuff. However, in the right side, nowadays you can see robots. This is a startup in Colombia, which is uh, using robots to doing the delivery stuff. But there are small stuff, right? Because you, you can't put any big, big stuff there, like a pork, for example. It's, it's a small pieces of, of packages. Well, also in the transactions, Traditionally, we, we use like a, this kind of currency, bills, uh, but nowadays we are using uh, mobile apps to do payments. Mobile apps to pay, for example, in a grocery store, also to pay in, in, in a bus. So you can use nowadays applications, apps. Well, so, what about education and startups? Nowadays, I am leading Hero Startup, which is a startup related to education. And how do we change? Uh, my recommendation for all of you uh, that you are watching this presentation is to, to try to understand what's happening. For example, we, we have been watching that they are teachers that are not allowing to go to schools to teach anymore in, in, in a normal way. So they have to use these, these computers, they have to use smartphones to teach their students. But in my country, in Latin America, which has like more than 500 million of population, there, there are like a more than four or five million, five million of population that they are teachers. And those teachers never, never use computer as a tool for, for training their students. So what happened that they were not able 
to do their lessons, to do their classes. So as we are a startup in, in, digital, in digital area, as we are a an, an startup in, in education sector, Hero Startup is a startup related in education sector, we started a new, a new uh, program. The program was called Teachers with Digital Skills. So we launched a minimum viable product because we knew we knew in, in Peru there are like four four hundred thousand teachers, four hundred thousand teachers, and they are not well trained. They are not trained using these digital tools for teaching. So we we launch a paid MVP because you have to be sustainable. You need to ask for money if you do a service. So we launch an, a minimum viable product, which is called a uh, teacher with digital skills in Spanish, because in Peru, we, we talk Spanish. It was called Programa de Docentes Digitales. It was a Programa de Docentes Digitales. Uh, it was going very good. And also we want to expand that and we give a new alliance with education ministry. Nowadays we are working with education ministry and we, and we gave them scholarship for education ministry, for teacher, for 120 teachers. We have been training them in those tools that you are watching here. So it is, it is very good because it opens new doors because nowadays we are talking with Ecuador. It, Ecuador is another country which is close to Peru and we are talking with Ecuador to, to train their teachers as well. So it was very good, uh, a very good opportunity to open our eyes, to open our market, to try to change a little bit. And nowadays we are training teachers. Previously, we've been training students to launch their own startups because our name is Hero Startup. Well, those are in this picture, as you can see, they are happy teachers that they were attending our lessons. I would love to show to, I would love to, um, to show you a video, but the video is in, in Spanish, but I, I pr my promise is to, to translate soon. Well, going to, to the sixth point, opportunities for startups, opportunities for you guys, for everybody who is uh, thinking to start their own business. In India, for example, you can use this platform, which is called F6S. This platform, uh, you, you can find, you can find many accelerators. If you put Accelerator India, you can find, for example, Cohort Second, Incubation Fund Racing, Open Innovation in New Delhi, Growth, growth We Sprint in Mumbai, Brigade re Reup Cohort 8 in Bangalore, and so on. So I encourage you uh, to see this platform to try to to trying to find funds for your for your ideas and also i strongly recommend startup chile because i i received uh, funding when i when, in 2014 i received 4000 us dollars and i was living in chile for around 1 year so also it is it is open for everybody because I met one friend from, from Ahmedabad, which is uh, one of my colleagues. And also he and his team traveled to Chile in that moment, and they received uh, this kind of funds, free fund from the Chil Chilean government. Finally, I want to recommend you, all of you guys, for this period, to learn this remote collaboration tool. You have to learn because it will help you work with your teams. 
For example, I recommend to use Slack for team chat work, Zoom as we are using now, task management tools like Asana, Trello, document collaboration like Google Doc, Google Slide, code collaboration, design collaboration, and so on. Well, nowadays we are hiring people which is related to machine learning, artificial intelligence, Python, so thank you very much and I hope that these words can help you. I encourage you to start your, your business now, to launch now, and well, opportunities are in this time better than another time. Thank you. It is late night in Peru right now. We are highly grateful that Mr. Corel delivered his lecture at such an odd time at his place. If I have to summarize your lecture in one line, it would be crisis time is a good moment to launch. Sir, this would continue to motivate our young audience for long. Through your lecture, we got some ideas about the COVID situation as well as the startup opportunities in Latin America. This is the beauty of international webinar that exchange of ideas is happening across <laughs> continents. Thank you, sir, for such an insightful session. Our youth will definitely benefit from your impactful inputs. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our, our next eminent speaker from abroad today is Mr. Chi Pu Young from Malaysia. Now I request Dr. Asok to formally introduce our esteemed speaker. Over to you, Asok Ji, please. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay, start please. Oh. Our second speaker, hello friend, our second speaker is Chi Po Yang from Malaysia. Mr. Chi Po Yang, corporate trainer at Rich Mind Consultant, Malaysia. Chi Po Yang earned a bachelor degree in business administration honors at the Northern University of Malaysia and charged up a long track record in business development, insurance, and entrepreneurship. He founded Rich Mind Consultant in 2016 and Rich Mind Consulting and Mentoring <coughs> BHD. 2009, 2019, that focuses on mindset transformation and leadership development, sales, marketing, entrepreneurship, and team building. He is a human resource development fund, HRDF certified in trainer in the country in 2017. He was one of the 20 entrepreneur mentors and which is sent by HRDF, the Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India, EDI, at Ahmedabad in Gujarat, India to be trained as a certified entrepreneur mentor in Malaysia. He is a co-founder and current president of Wishes Land One Stop Center for several Palsy children to receive treatment and rehabilitation in Kuching and Samran co-founder and current secretary general of the Sarawak Bokia Association, vice president second of Social Welfare Council of Sarawak and secretary of Rotary Club Kuching South 2020 and 2021 term. He is the forum panelist of World Mental Health Day celebration organized by Ministry of Health held in Miri in 2018 and early childhood education Inclusivity, the war forward organized by Ministry of Welfare. Community well-being, women, family, and childhood development, Sarawak held in Kuching in 2009. He is the platform speaker of Great Eastern 2020, fast start for Sarawak region, speaker for Tokyo Marine Insurance Group, 
BCSC kick start regional seminar 2020 in five main cities in Malaysia and entrepreneur, mentor, life coach for some agencies and agent in Prudential AIA, Great Eastern and Tokyo Marine Insurance Group. <coughs> he, in recognition of his accomplishment and contribution in the value of innovation, intellectual and in infinity in training industry, he was awarded by the Malaysia Global Ch Chamber of Commerce at the Asian in Award 2018, Aspiring Educa Educator Award 2018. He is the author of a book entitled Know Your Purpose to Love Abundantly, which has been published in February 2020. He is currently writing his second book entitled Entrepreneurship, Entrepreneur Success Manual. So once again welcoming you, sir. Now I would like to invite you to discuss on startup opportunity. Uh, thank you, sir, for your introductions. First of all, let me um, start my sharing on my slide. So this is my slides for my presentation this afternoon. Everyone can see, yeah? I believe everyone can see. So um, this is the topic for today's session, post-COVID-19 startup opportunities for youth international web miner in India. Apakabar semua? This apakabar means uh, how are you? It's in Bahasa Malaysia. Uh, we are from Malaysia. I'm staying in Kuching. It's in a Borneo Island. And we send Apakaba a warm greeting to all the uh, counterpart in Varanasi, India. So this is a warm greeting from Kuching, Malaysia to Varanasi, India. Thank you. Thank you to Harish Chandra Postgraduate College, Varanasi, India for inviting me to be one of the speaker in this uh, post-COVID-19 startup opportunities for youth. It is always my passion yeah, to impact life of majority, to live an abundant life. So especially on our youth, because I know the youth is the pillar for our future in our respective countries. So this is always my uh, passion to give opportunity for our group, our youth to grow their future. And also I want to say thank you, terima kasih to Dr. Ashok Kumar Singh, yeah, the Associate Professor from the Department of Commerce, yeah, to be the uh, convener to this International Web Miner Conference. Thank you to you, Dr. Ashok. Kumar Singh and also your team member for this wonderful uh, arrangement. This is me, a bit of my background. I'm the founder of the Secrets to Live an Abundant Life in Malaysia. And I also have some students in overseas as well. And I have 23 years of experience in sales and marketing, entrepreneurship and also mentoring. Yeah, so this is my background in terms of corporate sectors and in terms of the uh, social responsibility. I am the founder, I'm the founder of Wishes Land. Wishes Land is a center for cerebral palsy children to get their treatment in Kuching and Samahan Division. Currently, we have uh, six physiotherapists and also 72 children in our center getting all kinds of a treatment such as physiotherapy, hydrotherapy and so on. So this is my center in Kuching has been established since 2009. So what is the purpose here today? Why we are here today? We are here for two purposes in my presentation this afternoon. The first one is to create awareness about startup opportunities for youth all around the world. 
And the secondly is uh, to discuss about various best practices on startup mentoring and incubation. This is my passion as well. Let's go into the first one, which is a startup opportunity for youth. What have we learned from COVID-19? As we know from a previous sharing, a sharing session from the various speakers, uh, we know that uh, COVID-19 has a message to all of us. As for me, I would like to say thank you to COVID-19 because uh, COVID-19 has gave us quite a big lesson in our life, yeah? which I can summarize it as below. Through COVID's existence in our life, it creates the awareness in our life that there is such coronavirus in our life. And with the awareness we have here, then we are going to we learn how to tackle this virus in our life. Then our knowledge is getting, getting more and more and understand about this virus. And through the uh, understanding and also sharing throughout the world uh, between the government and the Ministry of Health across the world, uh, we already confirmed how to tackle this coronavirus, COVID-19. We come up with a lot of action plan, especially on the hygiene, wearing the mask and so forth. The uh, action plan is applicable to everyone throughout the world. And with this uh, uh, proven action plan, then you can see the cases reported daily reduced. Like in Malaysia, in Malaysia now, uh, the latest figure is we have 8,445 cases of uh, coronavirus, of which 120 casualty. So this number has been staying there for quite a few weeks. It's not that on the rise, uh, on the rise trend. Then our Malaysian government already informed all the Malaysians uh, that uh, we are opening up our businesses uh, in, by freshers, yeah, day by day. And more businesses uh, are opening up. Then our Malaysians are feeling more calm in terms of their feeling. They see the future, they see the opportunity after the COVID-19. And through this calmness, then we have a new habit of how we live our life as shared by some of the speakers just now, some chief guests just now, we have some distancing, social distancing, despite I love you, my wife, my husband, and so on. We have a social distancing, you see? So this is the awareness that we have with the existence of COVID-19 that I understand. And through, through COVID-19, also we should thank COVID-19 because this is what we wanted in our life. Because all this while, we always complain to ourselves and also to others in the world that we have no time to do this, no time to do that, no time to do this, you see. So now with the COVID-19 existence, with the pleasure of COVID-19, we have ample time stay at home to do something that we wanted, to create some idea to solve our life, life problem. So we should thank COVID-19. And also you can see with the existence of COVID-19 for the past three months, the whole world environment is getting better. So this is a good news of the existence of COVID-19. Yeah? And also, this is my sharing on the post-COVID-19 startup opportunities for youth. There are a few cycles that we need to understand. The first is we need to accept we need to accept the fact that there is a COVID-19 around us here. Yeah? yeah, this COVID-19 will be gone one day, but we don't know when. So we need to accept the situation whereby there is COVID-19 surrounds us. And also we need to also accept the challenges that we have yeah, with the existence of COVID-19, such as social distancing, keep hygiene of our hand, you know, take care of our well, our health as well. And also those inconveniences that are happening in our life now, as mentioned by some of the speakers just now, for example, education, the school is closed, the colleges, university is closed, restaurant has less customer and so on. So we need to accept the fact that these are the things happening now. By accepting the fact that uh, there is a COVID-19 in our life, then we can start to discover, we can start to discover 
what are the inconveniences that surrounds us yeah what are the problems faced by the majority in our society and also what are the worries fears and their wishes as well so through this discovery then we can create idea to address this concern this problem this inconveniences and also these worries of fear so with this kind of uh, ideas uh, generations stage then we can go for the uh, research and development which is r d we are going to look into the feasibility study in terms of the finance market technology entry barriers costing and also source of income etc by having the ideas to solve the problem of the people surround us in our country right then we know either this idea can be converted into a possible startup opportunity or otherwise so this is what i summarize it in general post covid 19 startup opportunity for our youth as our youth is very it savvy they are easily can find out all this information and they are the youth right they can understand how inconvenienced they are now instead of going out but they stay at home instead i want to meet friends but they meet through zoom and other social media platform so these are the cycle that our youth should go through to find what are their startup opportunity so startup opportunities for me is exit in every problem inconvenience worried fear and also wishes of every individual so this is the startup opportunity i'm talking about the small startup and eventually growing up to become a medium size and then a large scale yeah we don't talk about the large scales first if we don't know what we wanted to do you see so startup opportunity exists in every problem just think of what are the problem happen and also uh, exit in our life then what can we do what can we do with the problem then you must know what you love and what are your strengths and resources available so they can jump start your startup business yeah you cannot follow the trend if you don't know if you don't love the industry you don't follow your friends if you don't love the industry yeah you follow what you're passionate about what you love the most and what are your strengths in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your speaking, in terms of your actions, yeah? What you love the most and what is your strength and what are the resources available in your family, in your, in your, in your surrounding, in your uh, friendship, in your network. So what are the resources available so that you can start up your startup immediately. So I give you some example here, like food industry. Food industry, now you can see a trend from the offline to online. There'll be a lot of online order. And then also they are also facing some packaging problem because they are their traditional food operator. So if you're thinking of a designing packaging for them, then this is a good opportunity. And what about the promotional material, you see? There are a lot of startup can design a good materials, promotional materials for those traditional restaurant. What about delivery system? Yeah, how to deliver the food from the restaurant to the end user? Yeah, to the uh, to the customer. You also can think of that in your respective uh, country and also your city. And what about the payment? What are the payment gateway arrival for the food industry? So you can think of that. Yeah, these are the opportunity. These are the problem inconveniences faced by the customer. And the second one is in terms of a logistic and transportation yeah think of your country think of your city and also the place you live how convenient is your domestic support in terms of lorry buses local train lrt and so forth and how fast is your delivery from the supplier to the end user is there any technology involvement of these processes what about human resource what kind of human resource you need uh, to fasten, to speed up this delivery of goods? And also, what the channel available in your country, in your city? So we start from small. Don't think about the big, yeah? 
Start from small, solve the small problem, then that will create the opportunity for you. Another area you can look into is training, learning, and development. As mentioned by previous speaker, you can see many schools are crossed, many universities are crossed, right? And a lot of students, they cannot go to school. They are embarking on the online learning method, you see? So you can go into this uh, area as well to find what are the opportunity you have. If you are good in writing software, then this is your future. If you are good in uh, writing content, content development, this is your future as well. And if you are good in uh, uh, preparing e-examination, if you are good in uh, managing uh, quality, right, then this training and learning development area will be your preferred startup opportunity. Another area is leisure, you see. A lot of people cannot go for holiday. A lot of countries uh, cross their border, you see. So now a lot of people, they go online to go for virtual tour, you see. So we need also a lot of people to start up your business to gather information in the respective tourist attraction, photo taking, video editing, scripting, and also storytelling. So these are the many, many startup opportunities you can think of in your own country, in your own community. And these are the things that uh, you can provide to solve the inconvenience, to solve the problem faced by many tourists. Another area you can look into is healthcare. Yeah, healthcare is very important in our community. You can think of how can we create conveniency in terms of consultation in terms of initial diagnosis. Not all the diagnosis must go to clinic. Some diagnosis can be put online, yeah, through virtual, uh, virtual processes. And you can do some simple operation as well, and also medical prescription. So these are the area for our youth yeah, to understand, to, to venture into, to look into your own interest, your love, and your strength. See which area you want to venture into. Every area requires expertise. Every area requires someone to do it. And next one you can see in terms of sales, a lot of people now they cannot go for face-to-face -face presentation. So now a lot of people they go for e-presentation. So you need to create a platform, yeah, platform, e-platform, yeah, to allow the salesman or salesperson to communicate with the end user, buyer. How about the product design, product description, script writing, short video presentation, online order system, payment gateway, door-to-door -door delivery, quality control of the goods, and also after sales service. So ladies and gentlemen, my dear youth yeah, out there, think of the way, think of the way how to solve this sales personnel problem. And also think of the way how to solve this consumer problem. And you must bridge the gaps, bridge the gap between the sales personnel and end user. And the gaps here is your opportunity. And the next one you can see here, um, I, I believe in India, there are a lot of uh, software designer, software writer. So this is a huge opportunity. This is a huge opportunity for everyone, the youth, right? To start writing software for all the industry out there because all the industry out there require software because this is the new consumer buying behavior. Yeah, and also all the, cons all the company, all the big corporation, they all go for cost cutting. So through this user-friendly software, they will enjoy cost effectiveness and also time saving for the consumer, for the consumer uh, to get what they want, you see, by just a touch of the screen, and also speedy sales generation and customer satisfaction. So think of the way, if you, you would like to do some designing, some writing of the software, right? This will be your future, and this is a huge future, require less capital involvement, yeah? And the next one you can see from here, and this is happening throughout the world. That's why you can see the existence of Zoom suddenly, yeah, in front of all of us. And there's a big, big opportunity for startup, be it small startup, medium scale, or large scale, to teach business person or new business person, right, 
on how to do offline to online or online to offline business integration. Yes, this is on a high demand in all the country and also in Malaysia. So this is a new normal in all businesses, especially traditional family businesses, yeah, where they need yeah, to be relevant in today's business e-environment. So whatever their businesses is on the offline, where they sell face-to-face, -face, right? They must create another platform to sell their sell product or services online. So how to link this from offline to online, then we require expertise. So youth, this is your opportunity because you are of IT savvy. You study a lot of IT knowledge in your colleges and university, and this is a time for you, for you to work together with a local business entrepreneur, work with a, together with a local business person, yeah? And how to transform their local offline business to online. And for those already online, right? How to bring them down to offline so that they have two set of customer. Yeah, so this is a very, very huge opportunity for our youth. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go into my last part of our sharing in the next 10 minutes. I'm a mentor for the past 23 years, and this is my best practices on how I bring up one uh, youth from don't know what to do business to become someone who are very successful. So this is the definitions of mentoring. Mentoring is defined as a professional relationship in which an experienced person, a mentor, yeah, supports and encourages people to develop a specific skill and knowledge that will maximize their potentials and improve their performance in the business that they would like to venture into. So this is my definition of mentoring. So there are all together 12 processes for me to mentor a person from don't know how to do the business to become an expert in their own area. So the first one is they must un well, I must understand the background of the participant. For example, their family, their education background, working experience, strengths, weaknesses, achievement, and disappointment. From there, I know how I can work with them. From there, I know what are they lacking, how is their mindset. Yeah? I emphasize a lot on mindset. I'm expert on the mindset transformation. And then I, after that, I will identify what are the mind blocks of the participant. For example, I want to know how they see success, how they view failure. Yeah? What is their definitions of riches, poverty, abundance, freedom, and how high is their self-belief? How about employment mindset? Do they have the employment mindset? How good is their relationship? And how about competition? How they see competition? Because startup involve a lot of competition, yeah? And how about entrepreneurship? So from this encounter, I, with my participant, I will know where is their mind block. So when I know where is their mind block, then I will propose creative actions to remove their mind block. Especially, I will tell them how our minds work, right? So they must know how our minds work so that they know how to move forward confidently, yeah? And they must change the way they speak and also the way they act so that they can attract the good they want to come to their life. Then after that, I will gather all my participants for the initial startup discussion to find out their preferences. What are their uh, preferences in terms of uh, types of business they want to do and why they choose all this startup. I always start from small, yeah? Because I know if they know what they wanted, what they're passionate about, what they love, right? All other things can be solved. For example, uh, startup capital. For example, funding. There are many. There are many startups, there are many venture capital, there are many sources of capital available in Malaysia and also in overseas. So in terms of uh, funding, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm more concerned on are they making the right choice? Are they making the right decision to choose which startup to start? Yeah, once they choose it, they must 
wholeheartedly move into that direction. Yeah. So these are the things that I will talk to them, and I want to know how how can they yeah go forward with their current strength. I want to know their personal strength and what are the resources they have surround you in around them in terms of their knowledge. What are the knowledge they have? What are the skill they have? And what are the financial resources they have and others? So this is very important and also support. Yeah, do they have a required support in the local community, in the local uh, businesses? You say network and association. So these are the things I will gather from them. And after that, I will go and give them a self mastery test. Yeah, in terms of their mindset, their skill set, and also their tool set to ensure they are ready. They know what they want. Then after that, I will ask them, I will ask my participant to conduct initial research and development. I want them to go and interview the local community. I want them to go and interview the ministry, the government officer. I want them to interview those uh, successful startup entrepreneurs yeah, to get more information on the businesses that they intend to do, intend to venture. So that they got some rough idea of others' comment of their businesses. Then after that, yeah, they will understand what are the technology, financial challenges they need to face. And the most importantly, the market. Whatever they want to do, is there any market in their own community, in their city or abroad? This is very important because now our world is getting smaller and smaller. It's not getting bigger and bigger. Yeah because of the technology, yeah? So this is a very important stage. Once they have done the research and development, then I will ask them to build a BMC, which is a business model canvas. This is very important so that they can identify in specific, yeah, in the area they want to venture into as a startup, who are their key partners? What are the key resources they have? And what are the key activity they must do to make sure they succeed? Yeah. And how they want to start building the customer relationship. What are the customer segments they want to go into? What are the channels they want to deliver their goods and services? And what are their value proposition as compared to other uh, products, as compared to other supplier or player in the market? And the most importantly is what are their revenue streams and also cost structure. Yeah, we must minimize the cost and increase the, in, the turnover. Yeah, so this is the thing that I will ask them to do. Yeah, after they have done the research and development. So once they've done the BMC, then I will ask them on this important issue, which is what are their knowledge and skill gaps? Yeah, I will check with them. What are their knowledge and skill gap in, in terms of a specific business knowledge? entrepreneurial skills, leadership skill, because they are their own boss, they are the startup entrepreneur, they are their own leader. They must know how to lead themselves. What about networking? In businesses, we are emphasizing a lot on networking. Without network, you can't survive. We are working together with other counterparts, yeah? And how about sales and marketing skill? Problem solving skill, and is there any contingency plan? If plan A fail, is there any plan B, plan C, contingency plan? So these are the gaps that I want to identify together with my participant. Then we will suggest, you see, we will suggest action plan to cross their knowledge and skill gaps. In terms of uh, we are advising them, we are encouraging them to attend a lot of business related training in their respective city and attend a lot of seminar, be offline or online, a workshop. And also, I also want them to join relevant business unit cross group, association or the club, you see. Because now in, in our society, no matter what business, businesses you intend to do, no matter what startup you want to do, yeah, there will be an association. There will be a club already set up. Yeah? So you just join the club and listen to the uh, seasonal player, the veteran, how they start their business. And then you think of it. Are they you wanted? Yeah? The way that they operate their businesses, are they you wanted? You feel good on that? 
if you feel good on that, right, you can move strongly in your direction. Then after that, I will ask them to start to execute the business plan as discussed before. In terms of the physical and virtual appearances in website, they must start to show themselves physically. For example, they have an office, they have a shop yeah, in the street, yeah, or they have a virtual appearance in the website, social media, to tell everyone in the world that they are exiting in this world, providing what products and services. And also in terms of advertising and promotion campaign, I also will work with them how to advertise their product in local and also in overseas and how to promote yeah, so that more people know about their product and services. And lastly is they must get ready the sales and expenses report system so that they can track their business uh, progress. They can track their business trend. Yeah? So this is number 10. And number 11 is we need to monitor after they already executed their business plan. We need to monitor and also control their business plan implementation to make sure everything is implemented as planned. Yeah? And the last one is, of course, through these processes, right? Basically, my customer will be succeeded in their startup, startup journey, whereby all our entrepreneurs will enjoy the fruits yeah, of the hard work and they will continue to improve themselves. They will always keep up to that, the technology and industry trend to ensure they are always stay at the forefront of the competition. So ladies and gentlemen, for me, right, throughout my 23 years of experience in mentoring and also coaching, yeah, I believe these are the three important factors for a startup to succeed, especially to our youth, right? our youth. The first one is our youth must understand Whatever they want to do in the other product or services, are they a market demand? Is the market demand high, medium, or low? Are they on the sunrise or sunset? Yeah. So this is very important. And secondly, is that they must become a master in what they are doing. Yeah. They cannot be just amato player. They cannot become amato player. Once they have chosen the startup opportunity, right? then they must become a master yeah, in that area. Then after that, they must create entry barriers so that they are not easily being replaced. Yeah? So over here, I want to advise my youth here, please focus 100% on improving your ability to perform your jobs and deliver your service. Yeah? With that, you will be on track to succeed in your startup journey. What motivates a person to be a startup entrepreneur? Throughout my 23 years of experience in uh, mentoring, yeah, I see this is a main reason. A lot of uh, youth, right? You are very passionate to improve life of majority in all areas, either in food, in shelter, in transport, or in leisure. Yeah? So that you will continue on yeah, on this startup journey. So always remember, youth, what is your mission? It's very important. That mission will drive you. And it's not the startup opportunity. Yeah, you must know which one you love, which one you're passionate, which one you are able to succeed. Yeah, to succeed. So ladies and gentlemen, my conclusion is, with carefully chosen startup, coupled with a burning desires, and patiently persist, you know, our youth, will be able to find their ways to succeed in the startup journey. With that, I thank you. Namaste. Disparate times call for disparate measures. Thank you, sir, for showing us a ray of hope in such depressing times. The best aspect of your lecture was the positive undertone you have highlighted the opportunities that are emerging in different sectors such as education healthcare transportation etc which can be perfectly tapped by youth to build successful startup your practical tips at each and every stage of startup 
right from its inception to its success are very useful sir the emphasis on making best possible use of resources available especially the human resource goes well with the saying that people are the most important assets of any organization or nation thank you once again for such an enriching session thank you very much sir thank you our next speaker is ms elva flores from peru madam's introduction will be given by dr asok over to you asok ji asok ji hello friends hello friends our next speaker miss elva from peru miss elva is very young and dynamic speaker she is bachelor of business administration and marketing from isan university with studies in digital marketing from west minister or minister university london uk she works in the training area of the innovation center of the pontificia universidad catolica operation manager manager in hero startup experienced working with the education ministry recently 120 scholarship 120 scholarship has been give to help public primary school teacher and trainers the best sex entrepreneurship project of national competition competition now i invite you to kindly share your views miss alwa please hello hello good morning to everyone and um, can all of you hear me yeah yeah ma'am you are audible you are audible ma'am you are okay, audible perfect thank you so much well i'm going to share my my presentation but first i want to i want to say that um well it's i'm glad to be here with all of you thanks to the dr ashok singh to promote this conference i think it's a good opportunity for all the entrepreneurs or for all the people who is here to want to start a business or maybe they have a business idea but it's important for them this kind of of events so well in this opportunity i'm going to talk about the startups opportunities for youth it's um in the way that um i'm going to talk about in like in my royal experience working in a startup uh, hero startup is a educational startup as you can see here i'm going to show you this slide okay so we have more than four years training people in about innovation entrepreneurial skills and also digital tools for online teaching so what i want to show here is that uh, we are a young startup we only have four years and in that time we found a difference uh, we find and also we have different partnerships for example um, first i want to to say that uh, hero startup was created in entrepreneurship development institute of india that's why uh, we were invited here right now and also um we have a, a partner with uh, stanford university we are a part of a future fest k12 and as as i was presented also we did a diploma about entrepreneurship with the pontifical catholic university of peru they are in the top three of universities in all the country and also we have uh, we have been working with national and, and international organizations for example like IBM Scotia Bank and also with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Work yeah so you can see here how a startup has to do the their actions to to reach these milestones to reach this kind of of partners and it helps us to increase also our our brand our our community okay so what i want to show you also is we have three sectors we are working with three sectors first of all we train professionals to become an entrepreneurship mentors also we coach persons who want to develop their business idea and the last one uh, program that we did is 
um, to train teachers to use educational digital tools. This is because of the because of, because of the pandemic time. You know, as Arturo said a few minutes ago, the teachers doesn't know how to teach in a virtual way. They don't here in Peru. They don't know how to manage, for example, Google Drive or maybe um, this platform like Zoom because they always have a presence uh, classes. So it's difficult for them. Yeah, so that's what we do. We have three sectors, as I said, and it helps us to, to make an impact also because we are, um, we are not only um, like a company or like enterprise, we also want to make an impact in the world. Um, in these four years, we reach all our region in Latin America. First of all, I want to say that we have more than 24 cities that we reach with all our training sessions. And also we have more than 300 mentors trained in Latin America, as you can see in this slide. We have, we have people in Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela. And also we have trained more than 3,500 teachers around Peru. And it means an impact of more than 100,000 students that they know they have um, all the, this knowledge from, from the teachers that we train. And it makes not only, it's not only um, for our country, it's only for all the region. And we, are, we have a global vision and we want to, to go to the world. So this is uh, our experience, like personal experience uh, here in the company, it's a real educational startups who is now in this moment uh, in the pandemic time, trying to, to improve, trying to know who are our, our customers, our clients, and trying to know more about them to stay, um, to stay in the market and, and also to be competitive. So as a second point, I want to show you also the educational startups in India that I found. Um, also, I want to say here that uh, I recommend to, if, if you, maybe one of, of you wants to start their own business, I think that educational um, startup is, is a good option. Also, thinking uh, about these days that everybody is at home and they don't, they don't have to go to a school, maybe. Well, in Peru, you can't go to school, everybody's at home, uh, they work at home, they uh, learn at home, everything is at home. So it's a good opportunity to, to start this kind of business. Yeah, and also in India, I found this, uh, like, there are like six, nine startups, Bayou, Top, Vedantu, Lido, Interrashala, Un Academy, Great App, and that's it. So I let you this information because uh, I think that it's a good op option that you can look them and maybe some research about what are they doing right now. What can you learn from them if you are thinking in uh, educational startup? It's a good option. Always, uh, I also recommend that if you are going to start something, you have to first to look for information and also do a benchmark with. Uh, with the best one in your sector, okay? And also I'm going to give you um, an information if you want to look for startups that are related to your business idea, you can look in Crunchbase. It's a web that can help you to find startup related um, to what you are thinking about to do. And also, uh, well, that's it in, about startups in India in, in the sector of education. And also we have startups in Latin America, yeah? We have three startups, educational startups that are very representative. First of all, Creana is, if, Creana is from Peru. Now they have a valuation of $7 million. And also we have a Domestica that is from Mexico that has a valuation of 10 million, and also Platzi that, that are raised 
10 million dollars okay so that what am, what am i showing sorry what am i showing this because i want to let you know that they also in spite of the situation they are increasing their sales because why because they are virtual education they, they offer virtual education and the people right now is looking for this kind of, of services okay so it's a um, the three options that you have in latin america and also i'm going I'm, i want to share you our experience in all these years because I think it's a good uh, knowledge that you can, I, I can transfer you um, in this uh, time that I have been working here and you can also apply it to your own business idea. What we did to grow fast and to find it um, also uh, connect with this organization that I show you in the first slide. Uh, we have, um, as I said, we train entrepreneurs, we train people with, with business idea. And in Peru, we have these three, sorry, five startups, Tukuy, Master His, The Molitor, Fitness Pass, Lofte. And also we help them and also we guide them how to raise funding from a national program in Peru that is it calls Startup Peru. And in total, the amount that the amount of money that they receive is like one hundred thousand dollars to start their their business idea. So it is a good uh, start when you want also to work with another organization. You have to first look for the activities or actions or, or strategies that can help you to grow. Okay. So also as I said, uh, we train uh, teachers about uh, or in innovation methodologies and entrepreneurship skills. We did this in, co uh, in the schools, in public schools. And also we have uh, a result, very important result, is uh, one of the teachers that we train, she, uh, what she did is uh, to train to her groups of, of, of girls, they were doing a, a project and they just participated in a competition in an entrepreneurship competition international entrepreneurship competition and they won an uh, internship to spain so it's a, a one of an, a, um, like a, a good milestone that we that we uh, did and it helped us also to to still training students in public school because we think that it's an important, uh, important um, point. Not only just to be a company who is selling, it's also the, the social responsibility that you have with your country. Okay, so what we did this a kind of training with a student is for free, and also in in this a kind of of training sessions or also in this uh, kind of uh, participation with our mentors. What we did is, or what we uh, reached one of the, the groups that we were uh, training. Also, they received funding from IBM, the company, because they create a, a product like a panel where the children in the streets can, can learn and if they are losing their classes in the school. Okay, so also we have a social responsibility. It helps us in our presentation when we want to know or we want to establish a contact with an organization that can help us also to, to still do this kind of activities, okay? So I think it also is a, um, a good way to, to know what to do is, for example, I'm showing you here our milestones. First, we have an, an impact of 120 teachers, pub, uh, school teachers. Yeah, we gave them um, 
120 scholarships in this program, in this new program about digital skills for the teachers. And it has an impact on around 12,000 students in Lima, Peru. That's why then we talk with the Ministry of Education to make um, like um, a relationship between them and, and Hero Startup. And what it, um, the result of this is we are going to, to give them 500 scholarships in this, uh, in this year for all the country, for all Peru. And then we have a, a, next, a next milestone that is to train 3,000 teachers. Okay, so this is like um, a timeline that we, what we are doing in order to increase, in order to also, more than in order, in spite of the pandemic time, uh, we want to know or we want to still doing uh, actions that can help us to, uh, to stay in the market in a, in a correct way. So at, at the end, we'll, the, the, uh, well, yesterday, it was yesterday, okay? We were talking with the Ministry of Education in Ecuador also to do this kind of activities, training teachers, training uh, also in, a, in digital skills because all the Latin American region has this problem with the teachers in public schools. So it's part of our social responsibility and also is part of the impact that we want to have in, in the world. Okay, so that's what, what I want to share with, with all of you. It's part of our experience, it's part of the actions that we are taking in spite of this pandemic time. And as a final recommendation, what I want to show you is um, about what a startup has to do when they want to, to start. If you have a business idea and you don't know what to do, um, if your idea is good or no, you have five, six, seven ideas and what, am I, what can I do to start just with one, what, which is better? How can I do? So I can give you a, just a final recommendation to end my presentation. For example, we have here, Kung Fu. Kung Fu was a startup um, founded for the CEO of Hero Startup, it was like six years ago. Um, and what he did in this part is, for example, as you can see, you have a perfect picture, a perfect photograph, and all the design is the better or the best, but it takes like six or seven months to do this, okay? And then when they uh, were launched at the market, they didn't have sales. So, uh, well, it was a, it's a, a uh, big history, but what I want to rescue of this uh, this experience and also with um, with this experience and also you as an entrepreneur or as a potential entrepreneur have to learn is it's not necessary to do these kind of things. For example, here we have the application and it has all the um, a perfect image, a perfect pictures but it's not necessary, okay? Because I'm going to show you when they did this landing page with Google Drive and selling healthy food. It was just the MVP, the minimal viable product. It was just in one hour. And then they didn't have problem with this, just launch the, the, the landing page and the people see it and they were buying this uh, healthy food it was like uh, it's for lunch healthy food for lunch and they were selling this and at, fun, at the end of the the month they have like around uh, in dollars it will be like um, five around six hundred dollars and per month at, at the first month and with this startup they earn $800 for one year. So what I want to say here is that it's, it's not necessary to have the perfect product. You have to launch as quick as possible that you can because then you can learn about what your market is going to tell you. If you don't know what, uh, 
uh, what your client wants, you, you don't know what um, the, the consumer or your target wants to, to have or you don't know the, the necessity, the real necessity, your product, if you, uh, even if it's the better or the best design, the best web, the best uh, packaging, etc., cetera, uh, it's not going to, to be good for you. So that's my final recommendation about how to create a startup, how to also know the opportunities and try and test your, your minimum viable product in the market. So that's what we teach also in our, in our workshops with entrepreneurs. And that's what, we, that's what we teach also to these startups that we train and they, they won seed capital from a, a Peruvian organization. So that, that's it. And also, I don't know if, if maybe there is any question, but this is part of, of what we are teaching. And also uh, to extend to, maybe we can collaborate with the program with the college and here our startup. Maybe we can talk later with, with, the, with the representative. And that's it. That's my presentation. Thank you so much for, for having me. Um, well, we have here my, my mail and also my, my cell phone if you want to keep in, co in contact with me. Yeah, thank you so much. अनिल जी आप म्यूट हैं हेलो हेलो आई वुड लाइक टू रिट्रेट द फैक्ट दैट इट इज 3:30 थर्टी एम इन पेरू राइट नाउ थैंक यू मैडम फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस इन सच ए शार्ट नोटिस एट दिस आवर थैंक यू मैडम फॉर सच एन एनर्जेटिक सेशन सिंस यू आर द यंगेस्ट स्पीकर and you also have experience in a startup sector therefore our audience which comprises mostly of youth will surely be able to relate and benefit from your lecture thank you once again ma'am thank you our next eminent speaker for today's session is professor pawanesh kumar from motihari bihar Dr. Ashok will present his formal introduction. Over to you, Ashok ji. Please. Thank you, sir. Hello, friends. I take an opportunity to welcome Professor Pavanesh Kumar Singh, Head and Dean, School of Commerce and Management, Sciences, Mahatma Gandhi Center University, Motihari, Bihar. He has 17 years of experience in teaching and research, and his area of research. Our international business and finance. Professor Singh mentored 10 PhD and published many books and numerous papers in national and international journals, India and abroad. Sir, I feel obliged and thankful because your consent is this crucial period of crisis means a lot of in making this webinar a success. And I am sure that your deliberation will benefit the participants and everyone associated with me. So, my dear friend, Professor Pavanesh Kumar Singh Ji, join us. Please come and share your views. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashok Kumar Singh, uh, patron of this uh, international web conference. Thank you, uh, sir. Sir, Tian Singh, 
ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर ऑफ महात्मा गांधी काशी विद्यापीठ चीफ गेस्ट एंड माय टीचर प्रोफेसर राजकुमार वाइस चांसलर पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी स्पेशल गेस्ट प्रोफेसर पी के सिंह सर चेयरपर्सन ऑफ दिस इंटरनेशनल वेब कॉन्फ्रेंस डॉक्टर रिस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ पीजी कॉलेज वेबिनार को चेयरपर्सन डॉक्टर ए पी सिंह सर वेबिनार कन्वेनर डॉक्टर अशोक कुमार सिंह सर फेलो स्पीकर फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड माई गुड फ्रेंड एंड लर्नड स्पीकर डॉक्टर अमित कुमार द्विवेदी लेडीज एंड जेंटल thanks to harishan pg college management of harishan pg college for organizing a international web conference on such a relevant topic that is startup opportunities to youth post covid 19 really uh, the management the, the department of com has done a wonder, wonderful job in selecting the topic which is relevant today uh, friends uh, i will i will like to concentrate more, more on the startup policy of government of india uh, before starting the presentation i would like to quote the quotation of honorable prime minister of india uh, honorable narendra modi which he delivered on 16th january 2019 uh, 19 uh, that never dream of becoming something if you dream dream of doing something this was a beautiful quotation by him uh, so uh, first of all i would like to discuss about the who are the players in ecosystem of startup india the players are number one entrepreneur there are couple support in the form of debt equity grants and non financial support in the form of incubation acceleration and technical expertise it also includes the government policies and programs which are relevant to startup india and linkages between acad industry and academia including the organizations and firms so the, uh, i would like in the next part i would like to discuss about who are eligible for the start, uh, startup india scheme number one the startup for startup india scheme the private limited firms limited liability partnership firms and registered partnership firms are only allowed the sole proprietorship concern is not allowed for the start scheme for the less than who, are, who wants to be in the startup india should be less than 100 crore and this entity business entity should not be involved in splitting up or reconstruction of business uh, which are all this startup should uh, development or improvement of product or processes or services and the model should be scalable with high potential of employment and wealth generation these are the some eligibilities for startup india scheme now coming to the benefits once what will be the benefits once the startups registered for the startup india scheme the biggest benefit is that once you register for the startup india scheme uh, there is the governments allow for self certification for nine labor laws and environmental laws self certification is allowed under the startup india scheme number 2 there is exemption income tax relief for 3 years if it is recommended by uh, the uh, you can say inter ministerial board and the and there are three pillars of startup india scheme these are simplified identified for creating the research hub for startup india scheme the under the public procurement policy the government has allowed the startups to register themselves for public procurement uh, policy they can register themselves on the government uh, uh, e marketplace which is known as gem g e m gem so uh, there they get exemption on emd earnest uh, money uh, deposit and the biggest benefit which the startups get uh, if they register themselves 
is that they get 80% of uh, exemption on the patent fees and 50% discount if they apply for the trademark. So these are the various incentives which is declared by the government of India if someone registers for the uh, startup India. And the process is very simple. Once you apply, you get the uh, information, you get the registration form within the two or three days. So these are the some benefits uh, which is available to the uh, the entrepreneurs who starts their startups under the Startup India scheme. Now, after the coronavirus out outbreak, it is an opportunity for India in manufacturing. I would like to share some data friends here that 30 crores computers are produced every year and out of this 30 crore, 90 percent is produced by china and as far as the phones is concerned 200 smartphones 200 crore smartphones are produced and 70 percent of the smartphones are produced in china as far as air conditioners are concerned uh, out of 11 crore air conditioners 80 percent of the air conditioners are produced in china it means China has emerged as the manufacturing hub of the world. Now, because most of the countries uh, are against China after this corona outbreak, now it is an opportunity for India to attract the companies for, from, China, uh, from China, provide the facilities here so that they can establish the business. Till date, I am sharing the data of June 2019 that there are 13,176 recognize it, which has been reported and created and they have generated job of 1,49,000. One they have generated job of 1,49,000 and 40, out of these startups, 45% of the startups have at least one or more women directors at present. And uh, you know friends that if the, we consider the startups as far as the uh, cities are concerned, in the tier one cities, 55% of the total startups have been started. In tier, in tier 2 cities, 27%. And in tier 3 cities, 18%. It means 3 cities have been ignored. So, in cities, big cities. And since independence, friends, I would like to share with thought. There are more than 6 lakh villages in India. There are more than 3,000 people three cities in India we must consider about the smart villages now these three villages have been ignored till date so this government to to supply the electricity to the village they have so infrastructure facilities, the electricity facilities will create an ecosystem where the startups can, the young entrepreneurs can start their startups. So even the SIDB, Small Industries Development Bank of India, has created one funds of funds of rupees 10,000 crore. And but it is very, uh, uh, you can say, not a, a favorable situation that till date the 10,000 crore rupees has not been disbursed. It was targeted. The scheme was started in 2016. The funds has to be dispersed before 2020. But till date, only 35% of the funds have been allocated. It means that till date, the startups have not started. India scheme has not been accepted as it has to be accepted uh, in this corona crisis. Now, I would like to share what are the top 10 successful business ideas which can be taken up uh, post-19 for the startups. Number one is streaming. I am uh, discussing with those, for those students who are techno savvy, video streaming may be one of the area where like Netflix, Prime, and all uh, Hotstar, these are all uh, uh, the uh, video streaming, uh, you can say OTPs, where the lo uh, lot of contents is available. So it is not possible to start such a big uh, video streaming app, but it is possible to create content. So students can create content for these, uh, these uh, uh, Netflix, Prime Video and all that, and they can uh, generate a lot of uh, revenue from there. Number two is gaming. 
gaming opportunities gaming apps uh friends there are there is there is an app known as ludo king before corona crisis 13 million uh, downloads have been done but during the lock, lockdown period it reached to 50 lakhs 50 50 million sorry 50 million 13 million to 13 million to 50 million it means there may, may be opportunities in gaming sector uh, in future there may be there may be opportunities in digital marketing because uh, this uh, as uh, as far as uh, the previous speakers are concerned they have already discussed that we have to live with the corona in long term so digital marketing may be one of the area where startups may be done because we are not going to see boards on the road side we may have to be in our houses uh, so digital marketing may, may be one of the area educational technology like byju vedanta an academy these are all uh, the educational technology companies so for the for the uh, uh, entrepreneurs there may be lot of opportunities in the educational technology online delivery next one is fifth one is online delivery like for grocery food and medicine uh, the young entrepreneurs may start uh, startups with uh, with low investment in the rural areas and they can move for online delivery digital health like there are companies like procto docs app they are providing digital health so digital health facilities can be provided online because uh, it is not possible to visit from azamgarh to varanasi takes at least 3 hours and if the consultation is allowed on online with the doctors it may be one of the opportunity where the students can work and uh, professional services like one company i would like to quote here urban clap they are providing the hair cutting facility at home so hair cutting at home they are providing plumber services at home so there may be there may be startups in the uh, in the areas of professional services uh in the area of green energy biotech and also there may be opportunities these are the opportunities for the techno savvy students but there may be opportunities there are opportunities startup opportunities for rural youths also like even though india is the biggest producer of milk we are uh, compelled to uh, uh, take uh, uh, the, uh, you can say the not up to mark milk or uh, Uh, we are uh, forced to use the uh, you can say uh, the uh, vegetables which are not organic so organic farming may be one of the area when st where startups can be done the 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 young entrepreneurs they can collaborate with the e-commerce companies and they can sell their products throughout the world sikkim has been one of the you can say the successful model for india and here because uh, i am uh, we are in up i would like to quote one of the scheme of the yogi government one product one district this model should be replicated all over india because hub and spoke model works here once we develop one product for one district the nearby villages automatically gets the benefits of the development the development uh, comes to the villages once the district is targeted targeted for the development so these are the some geo mart i would like to quote one thing uh, one example that the salman khan the actor in the film industry he has started during the covid crisis he has started started one company fresh and he is offering he is selling sanitizers uh, starting from rupees 50 so he has he has grabbed this opportunity he has exploited this opportunity he has entered into the the you can say the business by starting his own brand fresh so uh, but there are some businesses that are now going to be dying where we should not uh, move for startups what are those number one bot will be will die in times to come library libraries will die because library is available on the mobile itself photo finishing industry we should not go for the startups in this industry newspaper hard copy of the newspapers we should not enter into into that book stores sound recording studios all these uh, businesses will not flourish in future because there are alternate models which will come in future so there are certain threats which i would i would like to share that what are the threats in uh, startups the number one is culture friends main aap ek cheez batana chahta hu 
कि क्योंकि हम लोग यहाँ पर उत्तर प्रदेश में बैठे हैं बहुत सारे लोग अलग अलग राज्यों से जुड़े हैं फॉरन से जुड़े हुए हैं तो हमारे देश में जो कल्चर है वो कल्चर ये है कि जो भी एग्रीकल्चर में लगा है अगर मेरे पिताजी के दो बच्चे हैं और मेरा एक बड़ा भाई एग्रीकल्चर में लगा है और मैं प्रोफेसर हूँ तो मेरे पिताजी जो बोलेंगे कि यार हमारा लड़का ये जो अनपढ़ है गंवार है वो एग्रीकल्चर में लगा है जबकि एग्रीकल्चर जो है हमारे देश का जो है कल्चर रहा है तो हमारे देश में जो कल्चर है जहाँ पे एग्रीकल्चर को अभी तक रिस्पेक्ट नहीं मिला है मुझे लगता है कि पोस्ट कोविड नाइन्टीन में एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर रूरल सेक्टर में लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं जहां पे हम एक्सप्लॉइट कर सकते हैं और क्या कहते हैं स्टार्टअप्स को स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं बहुत सारे बिजनेस हैं हनी नहीं अवेलेबल है शुद्ध क्वालिटी का उसमें हम जा सकते हैं हम फूड प्रोसेसिंग में जा सकते हैं और मैं आपको एक एग्जांपल देना चाहता हूं क्योंकि यहाँ बहुत सारे लोग मुझे लगता है डॉक्टर अशोक कुमार सिंह गोरखपुर यूनिवर्सिटी में भी काम किए हैं और अगर आप लखनऊ से गोरखपुर की तरफ जाएंगे तो रास्ते में एक जगह मिलती है जहाँ पे सिर्फ अचार और मुरब्बा और क्या कहते हैं सिरका मिलता है आप वहां से ग्रामीण महिलाओं से सीख सकते हैं कि उन्होंने किस तरीके से वहां पर विक्रम जोत जगह का नाम है मुझे लगता है विक्रम जोत के आसपास मिलता है वो वहां पे किस तरीके से पूरे इकोसिस्टम को उन्होंने कन्वर्ट कर दिया उन्होंने कोई डिग्री नहीं ली है लेकिन उन्होंने पूरे इन्वायरमेंट को चेंज किया है वहां के तो इट मीन्स दिस कोरोना क्राइसिस शुड बी ट्रीटेड एज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड आई होप दैट इन फ्यूचर वी विल ट्रीट इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी and most of the youths they will not not go for as a job seekers they will go for job creators and uh, uh, i will end my topic aur isi ke sath i would like to thank the organizers for giving me me an opportunity to speak on the startup india thank you to all of you thank you thank you sir for your informative session you have focused on startup policies of government of india startup india mission was launched in 2016 to promote make in india your lecture will surely benefit youth who can make use of already existing government support for startup in post covid times sir aapne krishi em krishkon ko uska uchit samman dilane ki jo baat kahi hai bahut hi marmik hai कि हम किसी भी कार्य को छोटा ना समझें ये हमारी एक भावना रही है कि हम कार्य को अब बांट देते हैं छोटा समझते हैं तो आपने बहुत अच्छी बात कही कि कृषकों को सम्मान दिलाया जाए किसानी को सम्मान के नजरिए से देखा जाए थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू सर आवर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर फ्रॉम इंडिया इज प्रोफेसर अमित कुमार द्विवेदी फ्रॉम अहमदाबाद Asok ji please introduce our eminent speaker to the audience Asok ji Hello friend our next speaker is professor Amit Kumar Divedi <coughs> is from EDI India he is my younger brother professor Divedi is in charge department of policy advocacy knowledge research professor Divedi has over 14 years of teaching and research experiences earlier he has worked at mt university and iim ahmedabad in a career of about 14 years he could continue with textbook some reference book and edited books professor divedi has published a numerous papers <coughs> various in various journals leading journals in national and international professor divedi is the part of india team building leads prestigious global entrepreneurship monitor research study he is associated with this the study as national team member during 2014 to 2019 he is co-author of gem india reports 2014 and 19 professor divedi is the chief editor of journal of rural and industrial development also he associated with various journals published by elsevier springer imrald sage in inter uh, inter science taylor francis and publish in publishing in india in different experience <clears throat> he has been involved in making of ai city startup policy 2016 
professor divedi contributed two chapter in recommendation of national msme policy 2017 on the behalf of edi one man committee set up by ministry of msme in the year 2015 professor divedi received an award from honorable governor of uttar pradesh his contribution his contribution in the field of entrepreneurship development mere mitra mere gaon ke priya mitra ek hi gurukul se padhe hue mere anuj gorakhpur vishwavidyalay se padhne ke baad lakhnau se phd maniya shiksha mantri mohoday deputy chief minister ke under mein aapne kiya हमारे गांव की माटी और देश की माटी को विश्व के लगभग दस देशों में पहचान बनाने वाले मेरे प्रिय अनुज मेरे प्रिय मित्र को मैं बार बार स्वागत करता हूं, अभिनंदन करता हूं। सो प्लीज कम एंड शेयर योर व्यूज मिस्टर अमित द्विवेदी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद भैया even in the last week we were there and we had a very good webinar webinar seminar uh, i am thankful to the college for inviting me i listen the chief guest professor raj kumar the chief patron professor tian singh the chief guest professor pk singh and my fellow presenters from india and abroad the topic which is there is very very much relevant especially when we are seeing covid situation all across we all are facing the whole globe is facing and in this context a conference on startup especially for youth is very very much relevant uh, i was listening all the speakers everybody has tried to put in the best of their efforts so that the youth and academia can be benefited i have also very small presentation the later part of of startup i'm going to focus here means you have the startup but how you need to develop it how you can build it that part i'm going to cover here with my uh, small presentation of five six slides i hope this is visible to everybody is this visible professor singh yeah okay so i am going to talk about how to co create the value proposition we all have startups we know how to build startups but how to sustain it how to make it bigger how to continue it it is a challenge always and how from one country to many other countries we can take it is again a challenge for every young mind every beginner who is going to try his future his career in the startups i am going to talk about the value proposition this is very crucial component of any startup any business you can take value proposition why we are taking service from x and not from y why we are so much happy when we buy something from x company not buying from y company we are happy with the product of x limited not from the y limited what are those factors why they are so relevant the value propositions i am talking here they change the choice and perception of the customer agar main hindi mein baat karu to main ye batau ki kya wo cheez hai jiski wajah se hum jab jate hain dukaan pe saman purchase karne ke liye to hum kisi x product ko to purchase kar lete hain dusra humko pasand nahi aata wo dusre kisi ko aata hai wo teesre kisi ko aata hai but we don't go buy that x product what are those factors why they are so Why, why those factors are so crucial because when we go to buy a phone we always love to buy a good phone of good quality we go to buy a good quality of cloth things what is the value why we are buying that that intention is being built by the value proposition 
that intention is built by the some some factors which are motivating me jo mujhe motivate karte hain ki nahi mujhe yahi khareedna hai companies is par kaam kar rahi hain companies are working on 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 these things they are trying to understand how perception can be changed how thinking can be changed when customer goes to a store his thinking should be as per their product that is known as value proposition it is very difficult to define but it is the factor which helps people growing a lot ek simple example agar hum le le yahan pe ki koi bhi aaj hum startup use karte hain uh, agar humko khana khana hai ghar pe baith ke baithe rehna hai hotel mein nahi jana hai और वहां से हमको ऑर्डर करके मंगाना है तो हम तो ऐसी कंपनी ढूंढेंगे जो हमको यहीं बैठे बैठे पेमेंट भी हो जाए और खाना भी डिलीवर हो जाए अब ये जो सर्विस है ये सर्विस उस पूरे बिजनेस का क्रक्स है खाना बनाना और बेचना इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं रह गया बट ये सर्विस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दर्विस विद समर इज डूइंग दैट इज बेसिकली दैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन पार्ट इट नलिफाइज वेन यू हैव राइट काइंड ऑफ मिक्स ऑफ वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन इट नलिफाइज द कॉम्पिटिशन जैसे आपका वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन स्ट्रॉन्ग होता है दूसरी कंपनी से आप आगे निकल जाते हैं कंपटीशन से बाहर हो जाते हैं और एंड दिस बिकम्स अ पुल फैक्टर बिकॉज ऑफ दिस वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन ऑटोमेटिकली यू गेट कस्टमर्स यू डोंट नीड टू मार्केट यू डोंट नीड टू गो एंड सेल इट पीपल वुड लर्न ऑटोमेटिकली फ्रॉम द मार्केट दैट ये एक ऐसी कंपनी है जो ये सर्विस देती है इतना फ्रीडम देती है इतना एम्पावर करती है कस्टमर को हमको उसके पास जाना चाहिए रिस्क कम हो जाता है price up high charge kar sakte ho because you have the customer you have the right kind of value proposition like we have example of apple company you know apple some professor singh was talking about professor uh pk singh was talking about the steve jobs steve jobs was a brilliant person he simply thought about how he can solve solve the problem of the customer customer ka problem mai kaise solve karunga customer ko realize hona chahiye ki uska problem solve ho gaya and if you can do that कस्टमर विल नेवर लीव यू वो कभी आपको छोड़ के नहीं जाने वाला उसका प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व होना चाहिए एंड इन दैट केस यू कैन चार्ज ऑलवेज हाई प्राइस इफ यू कैन सॉल्व द कस्टमर्स प्रॉब्लम यू कैन चार्ज वेरी हाई प्राइस यू आर वी ऑल नो एप्पल कंपनी दे आल्सो मेक फोन्स देर आर मेनी कंपनीज हु मेक फोन्स बट एप्पल इज ऑलवेज अ प्राइस लीडर दे गो बाय अ हाई प्राइस एंड स्टिल देयर प्रोडक्ट्स आर सो पॉपुलर बिकॉज़ दे सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स they know how to do innovations so if you have a right kind of value proposition in the product you can charge high price you can create a niche in the market you can attract funders supporters banks and financial institutions will come automatically to fund you and it helps becoming brand so value proposition is very important to define when you go for any startup there is a concept there is a theory given by Professor C.K. Prahlad and Rama Sawant. I specially wanted to discuss here because we are talking about startups. 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 We are talking about startups if you want to create value from the product you need to follow this model this model is known as dart dart model unka ye kehna hai is we have to maintain dialogue with the customer continuous dialogue matlab jis customer ke liye aap service de rahe hain uske sath aapko lagatar touch mein bane rehna hai lagatar matlab us har ek service par feedback lena hai उस फीडबैक को लेके इंप्रूव करना है वापस नई सर्विस करके डिलीवर करनी है यू नीड टू बी इन टच विद हिम यू नीड टू मेंटेन डायलॉग मींस सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम कस्टमर विल फील दैट इट इज हिज प्रोडक्ट ये उसका प्रोडक्ट है क्योंकि उसने सजेशन दिया है और कंपनी ने इनकॉर्पोरेट किया हुआ है यू सी हाउ द कस्टमर इज एंपावर्ड अगर कस्टमर का कहना कंपनी मान ले और उसके हिसाब से प्रोडक्ट बना के दे दे तो कस्टमर तो इतना खुश हो जाता है कि उसको लगता है कि मैंने डिजाइन किया हुआ है प्रोडक्ट that is basically the idea the company should allow the customer to come and suggest something so that his value proposition his product can be defined can be developed so dialogue must be there interactions must be planned second thing is access you need to provide access of customer to see the data customer ko involve karna padta hai aap sab jante hain ki jab hum koi bhi koi bhi saman aajkal online purchase karte hain 
सो वी गिव फीडबैक दे आस्क फॉर फीडबैक अभी हमारी कॉन्फ्रेंस भी खत्म होगी तो फीडबैक का फॉर्म आता है फीडबैक देने के लिए बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू डेवलप आवर सेल्फ वी वॉन्ट टू लर्न मोर एवरी बडी इज इंटरेस्टेड इन लर्निंग मोर एंड मोर इन दैट सेंस वी हैव टू अलाउ वी हैव टू अलाउ द कस्टमर टू कम एंड शेयर द डेटा सो यू हैव टू बी एक्सेसिबल जो भी स्टार्टअप्स आप भी सुन रहे हैं या जिनको भी स्टार्टअप्स करना है उनको डायलॉग क्रिएट करना है अपने कस्टमर के साथ उनको एक्सेसिबिलिटी देनी है अपने कस्टमर के साथ थर्ड इज रिस्क एंड बेनिफिट आपको रिस्क रिस्क लेंगे तो रिवार्ड मिलता है सो यू हैव टू यू हैव टू मॉनिटर द रिस्क यू हैव टू कीप ऑन ट्रैकिंग द रिस्क पार्ट एज वेल एंड शेयर द रिस्क विद द प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट जो भी आप नया डेवलप कर रहे हैं उसमें रिस्क को भी मॉनिटर करेंगे एंड फोर्थ एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज ट्रांसपेरेंसी यू नीड टू मेंटेन ट्रांस जो भी स्टार्टअप आज ग्रो हो रहे हैं दे ऑल आर मेंटेनिंग ट्रांसपेरेंसी विदाउट वी ऑल नो कि ये सामान कहां से बन के आया है वी ऑल नो कि सामान किसने बनाया है वी ऑल नो What is the what is the what is the specification of the product? What is the criteria of the product? How, where it was made? All these things we know means company is allowing us to know the, the their sources, their kind of processes, and it is very very much transparent for everybody. It means if you are transparent, if you are allowing access to the customer, and if you are creating a dialogue between the customer and the company, you are going to create value. And if you can follow this model. your values will be always higher than anybody else if you go by this method systematically so this model helps us in co creating values for startups skewer saman bana dene se startup nahi chalte unke sath value create karni padti hai why customer will choose you only you need to know why customer will come to you only you should build that why customer will will not take other services you have to make those propositions so value proposition is always the key about the startup creation now applying co creation concept in crafting value proposition for a startup how you can apply this you need to engage stakeholders in creating value together means you need to provide some kind of feedback forms some kind of small small seminars some kind of interactions some kind of lectures some kind of blogs where your customer can come and say frankly about the problems that he is facing to you uh here uh i keep on i always have kapil das ji ka doha and since it is from banaras i need to recite that doha nindak niyare rakhiye aangan kuti chhavaye hum sab log kapil das ji ko padhe hain abhi know that so kapil das ji says that you need to keep your your nindak very close to you those who are those who are giving very very typical feedback very rough feedback very tough feedback keep those people with you because they are the people who are helping you to develop your product always keep them closer to you that is what this 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 stakeholder stakeholder engagement is you need to keep your people with you you need to keep bankers you need to keep financiers you need to keep customers you need to keep suppliers with you and take continuous feedback from them so that you can learn what best you can deliver for the market आप उनसे दूर होकर बिजनेस नहीं कर सकते आप वन वे बिजनेस नहीं कर सकते आप स्टार्टअप हैं आपको रोज नया सीखना है वी ऑल नो दैट स्टार्टअप वी वी हैव अ स्टार्टअप फ्लिपकार्ट कितना छोटा कंपनी था इट वाज जस्ट स्टार्टेड विद सेलिंग बुक्स इन बेंगलुरु नाउ सी व्हाट नॉट दे आर सेलिंग दे लर्न अ लॉट दे लर्न फ्रॉम द मार्केट दे इवॉल्व देमसेल्फ एंड नाउ दे आर द बिगेस्ट स्टार्टअप इन आवर कंट्री so engage stakeholders continuously be in their touch and learn from them identifying and supporting ecosystem players if you are a startup if you are a new firm you need to know who are the supporting institutions like edi the institution from where i come entrepreneurship development institute of india we are the we are the leading stakeholder ecosystem for startup in the country we always keep on working for startups we develop policies we develop programs we work with government government of gujarat and many other state state government government of india to develop small small programs policies and avenues that startups can come they can learn similarly every place like banaras also has an incubator in bhu those who are thinking about startups they should go meet incubators learn from them try to know what they want how they can help and then get benefit out of it means identify always the supporters learn from them and develop your proposition always better and better 
डिजाइनिंग को क्रिएटिव इंटरेक्शन फॉर स्टेक होल्डर्स इंगेजमेंट आपको ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म क्रिएट करना पड़ेगा जहां पे आपके कस्टमर आके आपको आसानी से फीडबैक दे पाए आपसे बातें कर पाए आपसे कह पाए या आपको समझ ना पाए दैट इंगेजमेंट प्लेटफॉर्म यू हैव टू क्रिएट तो यू नीट टू ऑलवेज क्रिएट सम विंडो वेर पीपल कैन कम एंड गिव देर फीडबैक इंगेजिंग स्टेक होल्डर्स टू टू एक्सपैंड बेनिफिट फॉर ऑल ऑलवेज टेक हेल्प ऑफ योर वेंडर्स टू नो अबाउट द न्यू प्रोडक्ट नया प्रोडक्ट क्या चाहिए मार्केट में आपका वेंडर बताएगा आपको खुद मार्केट सर्वे भी करना है आपका वेंडर भी बताएगा कि साहब ये चाहिए अब इसकी डिमांड है यू शुड गो फॉर दैट सो ऑलवेज कीप ट्रैक ऑफ दो थिंग्स व्हाट आर न्यू थिंग्स हैपनिंग इन द मार्केट एंड कीप डेवलपिंग ऑलवेज बेटर थिंग्स फॉर द मार्केट डीपनिंग द इंपैक्ट कैन इनेबल द वायरल स्प्रेड ऑफ विन विन मोर सो यू हैव टू कीप आप फ्यू स्टेक होल्डर्स और यू हैव टू कीप वेरी गुड रिलेशनशिप विद फ्यू स्टेक होल्डर्स कुछ आपके कस्टमर ऐसे होंगे जो बहुत डीप रिलेशन होगा आपके साथ और वो हर एक छोटी बड़ी बात आपको बताएंगे कि आपको ये ऐसा करना चाहिए आपको यहाँ डेवलप करना चाहिए ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होता है जो भी हमारे मारवाड़ी फैमिली बिजनेसेस हैं उनके यहाँ ये होता है हमारे पास कुछ कस्टमर्स होंगे जो कंटिन्यूसली भी देविल गिव द फीडबैक टू अस एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर फीडबैक विल चेंज आउट सेल्फ नाउ दिस इज अ फ्रेमवर्क विच आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर हियर this framework is basically customer this is the customer see he has he sees something he does something he listens from you and you need to know what he hears what he listens what he is doing what he is seeing all these things as a as a startup you should know startup hone ke sath aapko janna padega ki customer kya dekhta hai kya sunta hai kya kehta hai kya karta hai all these things you should know and all these things are not so easy very very difficult kyunki koi bhi customer seedhe muh pe aake nahi kehta wo aapka product lena band kar deta hai he simply discontinue association with you he simply not follow he will not follow your product that's all that's that is how he says something customer aise hi kuch kehta hai wo kuch kehne ke liye muh pe nahi aata kehne wo simply aapka product lena band kar deta hai means you have to have very good framework through that you can capture so when we conduct classes we use this framework mai ye framework use karta hu apne bachcho ke sath jinko mai startup jo startups hain unko ye exercise karni padti hai apne customer ke sath baith ke unka customer kya kehta hai kya sunta hai kya 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 dekhta hai aur isse humko learning derive karni hoti hai iske base pe based on this framework people develop value proposition part this is the basic framework of value creation you can see here there are there are two different sides one side is customer profile other side is value proposition every startup should work on this every startup who is there should work on this this value proposition framework how it works ye kaam kaise karta hai you can see here there is a customer job customer job means customer ki requirement customer job means customer's requirement and we have to fulfill the customer's requirements with the product and service you have to have any product or service to satisfy the customer aapke paas customer ko satisfy karne ke liye kuch service or product to hona hi chahiye then only you are going going for startup means that is the bare minimum requirement for any startup koi startup shuru hoga to do cheez to zarur hogi koi customer hoga aur aapke paas koi product ya service hoga iske alawa bahut sari cheeze zaruri hain jo value develop value creation ke liye zaruri hoti hain customer always feels pain customer ke paas kuch pain pains hoti hain jaise ki main example de dun ki Uh, अगर मुझे uh, अभी कोरोना के टाइम पे इन कोरोना टाइम आई कैन नॉट मूव आउट माय होम बिकॉज देर इज लॉकडाउन बट आई नीड ग्रोसरी आई नीड वेजिटेबल्स आई नीड मिल्क दैट इज माय आई नीड कस्ट अभी दुकान पे तो सामान मिलेगा वो शाम को जाना पड़ेगा वहां पे एक दुकान खुलती है वहां से लेना पड़ेगा बट माय पेन इज इफ आई गो देयर ए कोरोना स्प्रेड होने का चांस है आई 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 मे आई मे सफर विद कोरोना That is my pain basically. I don't want to move out. मैं घर से बाहर नहीं जाना चाहता और चाहता मैं सब कुछ हूं घर ही पे तो my pain is I don't have I don't want to take risk to go out but I want to buy a product and service. That is my pain. How a company can solve my pain? A company can solve my pain. जो दुकान वाला है अगर वो order फोन पे लेता है और अगर home delivery करता है तो उससे मेरा pain relieve हो जाता है It means खाली किराना दुकान चलाने से काम नहीं चलने वाला यू नीड टू बी इनोवेटिव सो अगर कोई ऐसा स्टार्टअप है जो कस्टमर की पेन को समझता है 
और उसका सोल्यूशन देता है देन इट इज इट इज अल्यू प्रोपोजिशन इट इज अल्यू क्रिएशन so my pain has been relieved because he has delivered the goods to me at my home my pain has been relieved i am very happy likewise he can create gains for me gain bhi chahiye hota hai customer paisa bhi deta hai sath mein koi discount bhi chalta hai chahta hai coupon bhi chahta hai all these things he want how he can create gains for me if if i i book a, a two packet milk and some other grocery दुकान वाला कैन कॉल मी एंड टेल दैट सर इसके अलावा भी ये सामान मैं घर पे छोड़ जाता हूं वेन यू फील यू कैन पे लेटर ऑन आई बी मोर देन हैप्पी आई बी मोर देन हैप्पी कि चलो सामान और रखे गया है जो लोग थोड़ी तो मैं ले लूंगा बाकी नहीं होगा तो वापस भी कर दे कोई दिक्कत नहीं दैट इज गेन फॉर मी मीन्स द दुकान वाला द किराना शॉप वाला हैज गिवेन मी लॉट ऑफ पावर फर्स्ट पावर वॉज दिस सॉल्व माई पेन थ्रू डिलीवरी ऑनलाइन डिलीवरी ही डिलीवर द गुड्स टू मी मुझे बाहर नहीं जाना पड़ा मैं घर पे पैसे दे दिया सामान मुझे घर पे मिल गया सेकेंड थिंग वॉज ही एज क्रिएटर गेन फॉर मी मेरे पास और सामान छोड़े गया है जितना कंज्यूम करना है कंज्यूम कर लीजिए बाकी ले जाए दिस इज गेन फॉर फॉर मी इसके अलावा डिस्काउंट देता है इसके अलावा कूपन देता है ऑल दो सिंग्स आर देर इफ स्टार्टअप कैन डेवलप सम वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन लाइक दिस यूज इन दिस 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 फ्रेमवर्क सर्टनली ही इज गोइंग टू बी द लीडर इन द मार्केट इफ यू सिंपली डू अ बिजनेस ऑफ रिटेल शॉप यू विल नॉट सस्टेन फॉर लॉन्ग टू हम सब ने देखा है कि रिटेल शॉप खाली बिजनेस करने से काम नहीं चलने वाला यू नीड टू बी इनोवेटिव यू नीड टू हैव प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग एटीट्यूड इन द बिजनेस देन ओनली यू कैन सस्टेन दीज आर द फ्यू थिंग्स विच कैन बी यूज एज वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन वेहकल्स वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन टूल्स हम सब जानते हैं ऑनलाइन पेमेंट ऑनलाइन बुकिंग अपने आप में बहुत पावरफुल टूल है जिसके पास ये ये फैसिलिटी है उसका बिजनेस इस कोरोना में सबसे अच्छा चला है क्यू कैश डिलीवरी पूरा जो डोमिनो का मॉडल होता था डोमिनो जो पिज्जा डिलीवर करता था उसका मॉडल क्यू कैश डिलीवरी पे चलता था यही सबसे बड़ा यूनिक प्रोपोजिशन था उसके पूरे बिजनेस मॉडल में यू बुक एंड यू विल गेट इन ट्वेंटी मिनट लो कॉस्ट हैंडी प्रोडक्ट पोस्ट पेड इजी टू रिटर्न मिंत्रा का जो पूरा कपड़ा है जो आजकल यंगस्टर्स परचेज करते हैं दे बाई दे ट्राई दे रिटर्न इट इफ थिंग्स आर नॉट गुड दे कैन रिटर्न इट That itself is very very powerful tool. Company इसी पर धंधा करती है वो कहती है कि भाई आप खरीद लो आपको मन करे वापस कर देना सारा बिजनेस मॉडल इसी पर डिपेंड करता है लाइक इजी टू एक्सचेंज चेंज कर दीजिए फ्री राइड ओला जब शुरू हुआ था दे सिंपली स्टार्टेड विद फ्री राइड इट वॉज फ्री टू फ्री फर्स्ट राइड वॉज फ्री पहला राइड आपका फ्री था और उससे उसने इंटरेस्ट क्रिएट किया एंड देन पीपल स्टार्टेड यूजिंग इट डिजिटल आउटसोर्सिंग सोशल मीडिया ट्रेडिशनल कल्चर लग्जरी Easy to recycle, after sales service support, value addition, eco-friendly. These are the key factors of any value proposition. That's all from my side. Uh, I thought uh, I will complete it quickly because we are already running late. Uh, thank you very much for giving the opportunity to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your informative discourse. Your focus on not only building. but also sustaining a startup successfully by value propositions is much appreciated it is easy to start something but sustaining it for a long time with all the market competition and intricacies such as marketing and advertisement needs sustained efforts you have shown the youth how to make such efforts thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you sir uh, our next our next speaker from abroad is professor chick value m venu from nigeria now i request dr asok to formally introduce him Dr. Asok ji, please. <coughs> Hello, friends. Our third speaker is Dr. Chikwelu from Nigeria. Professor Chikwelu Mobunu is presently a chief lecturer, dean, School of Financial Studies of Federal Polytechnic, Okio, in Ambra State, Nigeria. He has served the polytechnic previously in different capacities, including two. term head department of accountancy member of the polytechnic examination committee for more than 5 years coordinator research researches 
and development school of business financial studies he is a member of the following professional bodies association of national accountants of nigeria 2001 international triple helix association turin italy 2014 associate member chartered institute of taxation of nigeria aicit 2017 associate member institute of entrepreneurs aiou 2019 professor mubanu has participated a presented paper at both national and international conferences he is a thematic research group member of the international triple helix association knowledge and technology transfer and university industry partnership he is in the editorial board of the pioneer chief editor and the journal of international accounting federal polytechnic okyo and journal of industrial and rural development publishing india he was the ex external examiner of accountancy department akanu ibaim federal polytechnic afipco 2017 2018 he served as the president full gospel businessman fellowship international okyo chapter for more than 5 years council member chapel of the transfiguration federal polytechnic okayo the audience is eagerly waiting to listen to your views on the topic over to you sir so please come and share your views dr chikwelu Okay. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Chikwelu, we yeah, can yeah. hear you. Oh, you are audible. You are audible, sir. You are... Hello. Sir, you are audible. Chikwelu, sir. You are audible, sir. डॉक्टर चिगवेलू सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सर डॉक्टर चिकवेलू सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ ओके गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते नमस्ते सर ओके नमस्ते सर नमस्ते ओके आई एम ग्लैड टू बी इन टुडेज मीटिंग आई ब्रिंग ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम नाइजीरिया टू दी ग्रेट टीम एट हरिश चंद्रा पीजी कॉलेज वाराणसी यूपी स्पेशल थैंक्स टू दी uh vice chancellor professor t n sin uh to a wonderful friend the webinar convener dr shokuma sin uh you are actually very pretty you have naturally made it possible for me to be here uh you have been uh contacting me and uh, making sure that uh, i'm keep informed about the webinar uh thank you very much i want to thank uh, the co chairman uh, dr ani pratisin the dr anupam sahi and uh, dr sanjita swavi tava uh, i want to thank you i equally thank my co presenters of taking time to listen to their wonderful presentations on this uh, good topic uh, that is uh, quite timely at uh, this time uh, the post covid 19 startup uh, opportunities for youth um i would like to share my screen i hope uh, or can you share from your end okay Anil ji can you see her okay i want to share my screen oh sunil ji 
can you share a screen yes sir he can share uh, no problem uh, you can share sir sir you are, you are your host you can share sir okay but if you can share from there okay okay You are host, sir. Now you are host, sir. You can yeah. uh, share. G. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is this reflecting? Are you seeing the screen? Oh no, sir. Sunil ji, Sunil. No, no, not now. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, Sunil ji, kya ho raha? Just dekh lijiye. Sir, you can't uh, share uh, this slide. Ah, aapke pa aapke pas nahi PPT. नो नहीं अच्छा जोड़िए जोड़िए उनको फिर कहते हैं सर आप ऐसे ही चलिए ओके ओके सर प्लीज Yeah. Okay. I can go ahead. Can you share uh, from that end? Uh, sorry for the inconvenience, please, sir. Okay. Continue, sir. Continue, sir. Proceed. Please. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, COVID-19 has actually destabilized uh, the equilibrium in virtually every sphere of life around the globe. impacting on already precarious youth employment uh the covid-19 is like a destructive uh, uh what uh, destructive innovation does it has disrupted the economy of the world and the youth is not an exception uh is not an exception to the uh to the uh the, the 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 damage that uh, it has done to the world we know that globally the young people age between 15 to 24 make up a fifth of the world population and uh, and uh, almost a fifth of the world population and in africa the youth comprises the youth comprises uh, a fifth of the population about 20% in asia 18% uh, latin america and caribbean 17% in oceania 15% in north america 14% and in europe 12% uh, these are uh, statistics uh, from united nation as at 20 uh, uh, 2012 and since 2008 economic crisis the number of unemployed uh, youth has soared to its meter 73.4 million young people 12.6% of total youth population representing an increase of 3.5 million between 2007 and 2019 and projected to rise to 12.8% of the total youth population in 2018 so we can see that unemployment situation uh in the for the youth is not uh, pleasant at all is not a pleasant uh, uh so uh, what is the solution uh, I, uh for nigeria we have the same issue of youth unemployment is on the high side and also the globally especially for low income economies where there is need to integrate more than 3 billion young adults into the world economy by 
So the 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 the, the youth is a challenge and it's a problem to the world. How do we integrate about three billion young people into the world economy uh, by 2050? Economic initiative by enterprising individuals are likely to be the key in addressing the challenge of long-term productivity. So there is no way the government can provide enough job, uh, you know, that uh, that is uh, for the youth. So it is the enterprising individuals that will likely bridge the gap. The COVID-19 has uh, caused a lot of job losses around the world. Uh, the, the, the working age group uh, and even the involving the youth that are affected. So COVID-19 has actually opened up. Like one of the presenters said that COVID-19 can be said to be a blessing. It is the best time to do to start uh, to uh, uh, have a, a startup. So COVID-19 pandemic has opened the world, which is the core aspect of knowledge economy. So, uh, and uh, we see that there is a lot of opportunities uh, for both business entrepreneurship and also social entrepreneurship as a result of uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, intangibles in the knowledge economy are likely to play a critical role in the knowledge economy. So what matters in this post-COVID-19 era is the spirit and mindset of the entrepreneurial leadership for development. According to Joseph Aloysian Peter, according to Joseph uh, uh, Peter, He says that that it is entrepreneur who disturbs the equilibrium. And is the prime reason behind economic development that results in business cycles. It is in entrepreneur, it is the entrepreneur with the correct mindset that can cause, uh, in post-COVID-19 has been caused uh, uh, around the world in the social, political, and economic spheres. So it is the entrepreneurial individual who can create a change, uh, uh, like a change agenda, be able to uh, 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 correct the negative effect of COVID-19. So if we are to look at definition of entrepreneurship from the Babson College USC as regards, why I want to point it is that the emphasis on mindset, uh, the, the, the emphasis on the mindset, it says that is the mindset that is opportunity obsessed, holistic, which are leadership balance. So, 
So now you can continue with your PPT, sir. They, they are, we are here in some mindsets. According to Rita Margaret, in her book, The Interpreter Mindset, in her last key aspects, key aspects of establishing entrepreneurial mindset as creating conditions under which everyone involved is energized to, look to change the business model. So, create, creating conditions for opportunities to change the business uh, model. So, like now, we from all the presentations, In business will definitely change. Uh, so uh, we we need to think of how to evolve correct entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, you know, building on entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, how do we do it? So because it is individual that with the correct entrepreneurial mindset that will be able to change the business model. And there are steps to cultivate uh, the entrepreneurial mindset. Number one is awareness. Uh, you, have to be, you have to start with writing down all statements you had about whatever you are trying to change. Like here we have a post-COVID-19, the model of doing business has to change. Uh, E-business, e e-commerce is going to uh, alter a whole lot of things. Uh, we are going, we've been, uh, e-business have been something that we have not been paying particularly uh, attention to. to but with, in the post-COVID-19 era, definitely business model have to change, uh, reflecting the e-business. Understanding is the next step that we need to take. Write down how you believe this affected your life. Then the next thing is to disassociate, uh, disassociate uh, decide whether to continue with these thoughts or belief or change them now. So the next step on build, building an entrepreneurial mindset is affirmation. Make affirmation to yourself what you had about this particular thing is true and, and you choose to adopt new ways of thinking. So how should we help young people to develop entrepreneurial mindset? How do we help the young people to develop? Number one is to build skills through education. This is the time for young people, for them to build their a, a knowledge of, or on, uh, on, 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 the, uh, on the information technology. They have to build their knowledge on, on, uh, uh, on computer and inf information technology, and also other entrepreneurial uh, education uh, skills. That's one way that young people can build entrepreneurial uh, mindset. Another one is to redefine entrepreneurship. So 
we know that the world has changed from the managed to entrepreneurial economy. We are in the era of uh, small business. So we didn't, uh, the, the youth need to redefine entrepreneurship. You need to start small and grow big. Uh, we, uh, we don't have to look at the model of uh, uh, Facebook CEO or model of Microsoft and all that. You need to look at starting small. That is means redefining entrepreneurship through storytelling. Uh, we, do, we know that we, we know that you can fail and rise again. Uh, that failure in business is not the end of the world. You need to start all over again. So that's what we mean by redefining entrepreneurship uh, story. Uh, peer network is on the peer network uh, that were used in one of these uh, startups. Uh, they can and share ideas where they can share resources. This where business incubation comes into place. Uh, business incubation comes into place, and uh, and uh, it will help help. A Please continue, sir. You are not audible, sir. Please check your mute button, sir. Check value, sir. You are not audible. Uh, some network problem, please. Uh, yeah, network, network. Are you hearing oh, me now? Okay, okay. Are you okay. hearing me now? Uh, you are audible. Okay. You are you are audible, sir. You are audible. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we. Uh, I'm looking at one, two options of post-COVID era, developing the mindset of the youth. Then also, I'm going to lay emphasis on the e-commerce and also the, the social entrepreneurship because there are a lot of uh, externalities that have been uh, built as a result of uh, COVID-19. So the role of social entrepreneur is very, very important because in post-COVID-19, the negative externalities that have been the social uh, problem that have been created as a result of uh, COVID-19, uh, there, there will be opportunities for the social entrepreneur to uh, tackle or provide solution to some of these uh, negative externalities. So on entrepreneurial mindset, uh, there are key things that the youth need to be consider. Uh, number one is commitment and determinations that are there in the slide. Leadership, there is opportunity of session, uh, tolerance of risk, ambiguity, and uncertainty. There is creativity, self-reliance, adaptability. There is motivation to excel. So these are desirable and acquirable attitudes uh, uh, the youth can have uh, to have a very good entrepreneurial uh, mindset. So what are the opportunities in post-COVID-19 era? Definitely, uh, before now, e-cosmos or e-business is seen as something that is optional. But in post-COVID-19, it's, it's not going to be the same. Uh, there will be the one person uh, foretold that at a time that it's you, everybody will be 
e-business. And they were saying it's not possible. It's not possible. Uh, but now we can see that in post-COVID-19, uh, that likely that uh, uh, e-business is going to play a very critical uh, role. Uh, it, it's going to play a very critical role uh, in, in post-COVID-19 era. So, issue, what are the issues to ponder in e-commerce opportunity? There are issues that need to consider by the youth. Uh, number one is the speed. Uh, speed really does appear to be important. Uh, it is better to have a good web running uh, site. So a, a very good uh, website. Others create value building alliance in a website. You need to have alliance. You need to make make your sister understand how you are going to make money in this business. It's not all about having uh, a website or doing advertisement. You have to find how you can uh, do uh, business uh, uh, with organizations on B two B, so that you'll be able to. Uh, uh, make money out of it. The other one is be in a position to exploit groups. Some e-business have lost position as a result of inability to deliver. There are levels in e-technology. Uh, there are levels in e-technology. Uh, number one, first level is the most basic, is to take the form of a website catalog of breakthrough. Level two is, is to use as an alternative channel or two to promote or sell firms uh, online. Then level four is the e-technology offers information that assists customers in making decisions. I hope you are hearing me. So level four, e-technology is used to manage customer relationships interactively at each critical point in the customer activity. So these are uh, issues to consider in e-commerce. So like I've listed uh, uh, what they have done so far on startups, so but there are issues for you that want to consider uh, 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 internet startup venture. There are issues that has to be addressed. Uh, 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 startup venture. So, number one is question, proposition, or concept novel. That's number one. Are you trying to venture into what somebody else have done before? So you need to make sure that the internet startup is not venturing what has been there. It has to be a novel idea. The another one is does the venture has the potential to create value? So it's not just having an internet start, uh, startup. You need to think of creating value with it. Like you can see that Amazon creates value as a result of information they have on, on their customers. They can know their, what their customers need, their takes, their preferences. They are able to advertise it and thereby creating value on their website. So another question that needs to be answered is, what is the economic advantage over traditional business? We need to know that the internet startup, what makes it different from the normal businesses, the traditional business?
businesses. Uh, we need to uh, distinguish it that the internet startup is different from the traditional businesses. Another one is what, how we the venture generates its revenue. We need to think of how we the internet startup generates its revenue. Shown that best form of uh, getting revenue on internet startup is preferred to B to C business to consumers. So the internet startup has to focus on business to business. Then what is the size of the target market? The internet startup have to think of the target market. Is it going to be uh, economical? Uh, is it going to satisfy or meet the demands of the target market? The another thing that needs to be pondered is the route to the market. Under the route to the market, are uh, the required technical capabilities in place? Do you have enough technical personnel that can man your internet startup? It's very important. You need to have enough so that they will be able to meet up with the demands of your customers. So the, the technical capability is very important. Then are the fulfillment capabilities in place? So are they able to meet with the demands of their customers? With the venture traffic uh, and sickness, uh, is the start, uh, internet startup able to seek their customers? Are they able to maintain their customers? Are they able to put a hold on their customer? is a very important question that internet startup need to answer. Another one, with the venture traffic, how will the internet startup create a brand? You know, the internet startup has to make it a brand name. You have to have a plan to be a brand name. The another one, are there any regulatory hurdles? For example, you need to get regulatory hurdles. For example, sell, selling pharmaceutical products. Uh, uh, do you have the regulatory clearance to sell drugs, maybe that are off the counter? You can sell them through online. You need to get the necessary uh, clearance. The another question that needs to be answered is the competitive uh, intensity. How real is the trade of substitution? Uh, you need to know your competitors. Know your competitors. Uh, how will the established businesses respond? And uh, those that big, the big fame, the big internet fans, how are you going to uh, compete with them? Does the venture have first mover advantage? You need to be able to uh, have that first mover advantage uh, on, uh, to maintain your customers. Oh, yeah. Cliente, no. See, Amazon has been able to uh, know the preferences of their customers from one item to the other. You can see virtually everything uh, you can buy in on Amazon. You can buy books on Amazon. You can buy a whole lot of. They've increased their clientele uh, over time. So, and that is what they are doing to have first mover advantage. Then, on management and human capital. Does the management team have relevant industry experience? Very important. Has the, does the venture has the necessary skilled online workers? Very important. Then the finance startup. Normally, internet startup, you know, to come with the fund is not easy at the initial stage. But once the, the, the startup comes on, on ground, you find out that you can have. Uh, 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 you can now apply to venture capital, like one of the presenters, uh, presenters was able to illustrate where the, the, the startups can look for funds. So, but until the internet startup is able to come on uh, to uh, showcase that they are gaining ground, that is when they can be able to apply for venture capital. So the another thing also, 
are the exit through and timing defined. In case the internet uh, startup couldn't uh, succeed, there is also room to be absorbed by bigger startups. So I, I will equally talk on opportunities in social entrepreneurship. One will wonder uh, why social, uh, you know, came into play as a result of social problems around the world, uh, health challenges, uh, 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 housing challenges, education challenges, environmental challenges, community regeneration, welfare projects, advocacy campaign. Like COVID-19, you will agree with, agree with me that it's a hell challenge. Uh, the, the, the challenges that is coming into the world is enormous, and there's no way the government can provide solution to it that our best hope lies in the power and the effectiveness of socially motivated, uh, highly empowered individuals who fight for changes in the way we live, think, and behave. The social entrepreneur are the people that can take it up from post-COVID-19 because they are the people that we, that are motivated and highly empowered to fight the way uh, uh, for changes in the way we live and think. Like the way we live now, internet now, uh, conferences now, like the one we are doing now is online. A whole lot of things is online. Buying food is online. Agriculture, selling agricultural product is online. Delivery is online. Everything is online. That, but we have been thinking of doing uh, medical consultation online. So everything is online. Reading is online. So we find out that the way we are, we are living, or the way we'll be living in post-COVID-19 era, has dra dramatically changed. If we look at it, uh, they, they will say it's a disruptive technology, the way disruptive technology causes change. COVID-19 has disrupted, will be uh, disrupting the way we live, the way we think uh, in post-COVID-19 era. So the hope lies on the social entrepreneur. Like uh, Nichols in 2008 defined social entrepreneurship as innovative and effective activity that focus strategically on resolving social market failure and and creating new opportunities to a range of resources and organizational formats to maximize social impact and bring about change. So the, the social interest, like we saw in examples of social entrepreneurship, like the microfinance movement by Mohammed Yunus in Grameen Bank, we, we equally saw in healthcare, in small scale projects like support for mentally ill, we see all kinds of uh, Ill, uh, people that have been displaced by negative externalities as a result of COVID-19. Uh, we need social entrepreneurs to come as intervention. Uh, small, small scale projects, for example, in, in South Africa, we are we have mentally ill community to life skill tackling of HIV or AIDS. This time is COVID-19. How do we tackle COVID-19? Uh, we need small scale projects uh, to tackle it. Uh, we, uh, with the social entrepreneur, we, we prove her. So the social entrepreneurs, they have a unique approach that is both evolutionary and revolutionary operating an enlightened market environment where success is measured by, not by financial returns alone, but by tangible improvement in the quality of people's life. You know, the matrix for social
you are not audible sir sir you are not audible uh some internet issue please check all sir please hello so uh, g g g g you are audible you are audible you are hearing hello yeah okay 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 social entrepreneur they have a unique approach that is both evolutionary and revolutionary operating in an enlightened market environment we are success is measured not by financial returns alone so success is not measured by financial returns alone for the social entrepreneur is ability to put uh, improve the quality of people's life in post covid 19 era there is need to improve quality of people's life it is only social entrepreneur that can do it uh, you know how to raise fund to either people that have lost their jobs how to put smiles on their faces and their families uh, to create jobs for them uh, uh, and, and a whole lot of things the people that cannot feed themselves as a result of loss of jobs you, you know uh, there the social entrepreneur will come as an intervention there so because what they are looking their metric is to um, improve the quality of people's life they do not accept that only government and powerful individuals and corporations are positioned to determine where and how resources should be allocated so yes the social entrepreneur don't believe that it's only government or powerful individuals uh, you know can determine where and how resources should be allocated so the social entrepreneur comes in as an intervention so like we can see uh, in that uh, bubble there the 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 social entrepreneur they are how they are uh, uh, you know they are they are model business model comes in he says that uh, understood as a multi-dimensional and dynamic construct moving across various intersection points between the public private and social sector you can see the intersection of those three circles the social the environment and the economic at the intersection of those of that those three circles you can see the social entrepreneur you can see at the inter, inter, intersectional environmental challenges, social challenges as a result of COVID-19. You know, social entrepreneur will bring an bearable situation where you have intersection of the social problem, environmental and economic problem. You will see the social entrepreneur coming to create a sustainable change uh, the social entrepreneur will create a sustainable uh, change so their model their business model uh, you know uh, tends to uh, uh, maintain a sustainable change Uh, and uh, create social value still be incorporated in charities or guarantee community uh, uh, private limited companies yes social entrepreneur can be incorporated as charities they can be incorporated they can be incorporated as limited by guarantee they can be incorporated as private limited companies so these are different uh, business models for the uh, social entrepreneur. So uh, and it's very necessary in post COVID nineteen era because there are a lot of negative externalities. Uh, so the social entrepreneur we uh, come in there to uh, uh, solve these negative externalities, the death weight syndrome that have been created, uh, you know, as a result of that of disequilibrium that have been caused by 
the COVID-19 because you believe with me, COVID-19 has caused uh, disabling in the system. So thereby causing an, uh, uh, negative externalities. So they, we need a, 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 a bad, like in UK, you said there are a lot of statistics have shown that there are increase in uh, social startups uh, in, in UK and I, in India too. So there, there needs to be increase in, in social startups. Uh, there, there's need to have uh, a social banks that was uh, advocated by uh, uh, Yunus, Mame Yunus, you know, to have social banks that can necessitate, uh, uh, you know, uh, social entrepreneurs. So, uh, so there is need for social entrepreneur in post COVID nineteen era, so that these negative externalities can be tackled. We can see a whole lot of changes that the social entrepreneur have created around the world. So both in poverty alleviation, in healthcare, in education and training. Like I'm listening to uh, a lot of proposal by former presenters on, yes, education have changed. Uh, uh, the, the way of delivery of lectures now, we need to think of going online uh, for institutions that have ability to now invest in, 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 uh, in information technology, uh, tech, uh, you know, e-learning can be improved. Like we can see the role, National Open University, because what they use is internet. What they use is e-learning uh, have helped to bring education to the doorstep. So, but in post-COVID-19 era, we will notice that a whole lot of disequilibrium have been done in the whole system, in the education sector, in higher education sector. So uh, there, there is need for, uh, you know, social entrepreneurship to be, you know, to come in terms of education and training. Like we are now seeing it. The what the, uh, the, 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 the young institution is doing in this uh, is something uh, you, that needs to be commended. You need to be commended for this novel international webinar. And also not just that, it's more or less you are a social, in, uh, you've done social entrepreneurship because you gave this webinar free of charge. You have enabled tens of people around the world to share knowledge on your platform. And it's a, it's a social entrepreneur, you don't it free of charge. One would have think that you would have paid for the webinar, we would attend because this can be said to be a conference. This can be an international conference. So it's a form of a social entrepreneurship that you have undertaken. Uh, so the other interventions there like environmental preservation and all that is also, Community regenerations, uh, welfare projects. You know, uh, you can see that social entrepreneur has helped provision of employment to the unemployed. There are thousands that have lost their job as a result of COVID-19. Home for the homeless. You see the people that ignorant workers from the villages that are homeless. Uh, setting up of drug. Uh, uh, you know, uh, drug and alcohol abuse. So but uh, the welfare project, the social entrepreneur, can, there are a lot of people that have been uh, uh, dis dis displaced from the job market. We need to now find a way how we can bring these people back and, you know, enable them, give them training so that they can uh, have a startup they can engage, uh, start a, 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 a business startup uh, so that they can repackage themselves. So there is also the social advocacy and all that. So these are areas that a social entrepreneur can be seen to be of help uh, in post COVID-19 era. So with that, I felt that if with the disabled that have been caused by the COVID-19, uh, uh, the, in post COVID 19, we need uh, people with uh, entrepreneurial mindset 
the intangibles. It's intangibles like Joseph Alloy Schumpeter called, is, uh, he, he defined it as, uh, uh, you know, people who can cause change. You know, uh, uh, you know, he said people who can cause change, people who can uh, create change, you know. Uh, so, and it's, uh, it is an intangible uh, uh, variable. So the entrepreneurial mindset is that the people that can cause change, uh, you know, be able to revive businesses again, be able to uh, develop strategies, how the economy can be revived again. So the, uh, we need such people, and it's very important that uh, the youth should be able to have the entrepreneurial mindset in order to face post-COVID-19 era. Uh, there is uh, also to uh, see opportunities in e-commerce, in e-business, which is actually going to be given uh, almost 100% attention now because people are not traveling again. So a whole lot of things. So because of contact, not able to have contact. So training on e-commerce, how to engage in internet startup is an opportunity, a whole lot of opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, the internet startups are smiling to the bank, even as we are in post COVID 19. Because virtually now, uh, you, the, you either have them selling foods, delivering foods, selling all kinds of things. So we find out that it, uh, as, we are soft, as we are in COVID 19, internet startups are smiling to the bank. So there is need is a whole lot of opportunity for the youth to be there. And also to ability to develop, uh, uh, create change, put in how much money, but people that will want to improve on quality of people's life. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share this small piece with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for connecting with us from Nigeria. You have been with us since 6 a.m. of your local time. We are grateful that you sacrificed your early morning to enlighten us, time to enlighten us with your wonderful lecture. We are aware that all continents are affected by this pandemic and through your lecture, we got to know about the COVID-19 situation in the continent of Africa. Africa is well blessed with natural resources as well as human resources capable of turning current crisis into a successful startup opportunity. You have rightly pointed out that the problem of unemployment in developing economies can be tackled effectively if the youth starts creating jobs instead of seeking them. Thank you, sir, for your highly relevant views. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I take this opportunity to invite our principal and chairperson of this webinar, Dr. Om Prakash Singh Ji, to give the valedictory speech, sir. Principal, sir. Sunil, Sunil ji. Ji, sir. Ah, Pracharya ji ko aap connect karein. Dikh rahe? Ah, ah, hello, sir. Hello, I. Friends, it is immense pleasure for me to be part of this international webinar on the role of startups opportunities for youth in post-COVID era. As all of you know that 
entire business environment across the world has changed due to impact of COVID-19. Everyone is facing a dilemma of how to maintain physical distance and contain epidemic and running economy afloat. In this time of challenge, youths are charge bearer of development. They will be using this opportunity. When we say that this crisis is opportunity, some of my friends are ridiculizing us that how a crisis may be a opportunity. But as history repeats itself, every crisis has a new opportunity and we have to tone up our economy, our technology, our mindset according to emerging situations. In this context, I think our, our youth will be able to cope themselves according to emerging challenges and they will be touch bearer of future economies achievements. I think this webinar was very useful and participants from India and abroad expressed their views exclusively and we are very thankful to all of them, including our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor T.N. Singh, Vice Chancellor, Professor Rajkumar, and all participants. I acknowledge my gratitude from uh, on behalf of my institution. I hope this will be continue in future also. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Thank you, sir, for your support and guidance for this webinar. Now I would request to Major Pradeep Kumar Pandey to propose a formal vote of thanks. Dr. Pandey, sir, please. Mm -hmm. Namaste, one and all present over here, Honorable Vice Chancellor Mahatma Gandhi Kasi Vidyapit Bharanti, Professor T.M. Singh Ji, respected Chief Guest Professor Raj Kumar, respected Special Guest Professor Pawan Kumar Singh, and all the participants. It is a privilege for me to give vote of thanks to all the dignitaries, academicians, researchers, and students who have directly or indirectly associated with this international webinar focused on a very relevant topic, post-COVID startup opportunity for youth. On behalf of the college and organizing committee, I, Pradeep Kumar Pandey, would like to sincerely thank Professor T.N. Singh, Vice Chancellor, Mahatma Gandhi Kasi Vidyapit Paranasi, Professor Raj Kumar, Vice Chancellor, Punjab University, Chandigarh, Professor Pawan Kumar Singh, Director, Management Development Institute, Gurgaon, eminent speaker from different part of world and all the participants for their valuable time and encouragement. The eminent experts from various universities and colleges have delivered wonderful keynote address which were not only theoretical but also applied and more suitable to the present day concern. On a broader perspective, we discuss how the situation post-COVID can be utilized in creating some meaningful opportunities for youth and 
the importance of positive attitude as a key ingredient for success and stable for ahead some of key point highlighted by our expert the need for innovative thinking how agriculture sector can become a source of opportunity for startup and how artificial intelligence can play a big role in it label planning field has seen significant role in creation opportunity spiritual significance of black swan it can be treated as a graceful reminder to move from position you feel powerless to reclaim your power that startup is not easy but firm determination and innovative thinking will be helpful out of five major sector that are affected education entertainment tourism workplace hospital how digital arena will boom the different sector and discuss minimum viable production mr amit divedi discuss the how value proposition is the key for success dart theory can be helpful for startup d for dialogue a for access r for risk benefit t for transparency how right mindset leadership qualities and commitment are very important for any structure also i would like to extend a special appreciation to our principal sir dr om prakash singh for inspiring us throughout the webinar i must mention our deep sense of appreciation for dr anil pratap singh head of the department of commerce SCP Jikal Varanasi and Dr. Ashok Kumar Singh, Associate Professor, Department of Commerce and Webinar Convener, and all the faculty members, Dr. Atul Tiwari, Dr. Brijesh Jaiswal, Dr. Gajendra Das, for their dedicated effort and commitment toward this webinar. as any successful program requires collective effort i extend my thanks and appreciation to our college and department for their support and encouragement dr sunil kumar dr sadhna prajapati for technical support and all the energetic volunteers it was a great pleasure to be in a, this webinar and hear some meaningful insights from distinguished speaker thank you once again for making this event a successful one with your valuable contribution jai hind jai bharat hindu jai bharat thank you major dr pk pande for your formal vote of thanks thank you very much with this we come to the end of this webinar i now request all of you to please rise for the national anthem sunil ji please connect next